Chapter 3381 Terrifying Broken Sword Long Chen carefully picked up the back side of the broken sword, tip with two fingers. He was afraid of the sharp side. No matter what touched the sharp side, it would easily cut through it without the slightest friction. It wasn't heavy. In fact, it was as light as a feather. Otherwise, it wouldn't be floating within the Black Sea. Long Chen guessed that it was either the huge amount of sea monsters that had surged out, or perhaps the arrival of the ghost ship that had caused the water to surge, resulting in it floating into the bottom of the ghost ship. It then broke some parts of it, causing the ghost ship to break. After that, it pierced through his body, Navalun, come see him now that he thought about it. He felt a burst of fear. If it had instead pierced through his head, he would have died. Most terrifying of all, it had come without any warning at all. Long Chen hadn't sensed the danger at all when the sword pierced him. He didn't know if it was because it couldn't be sensed or because his senses were restricted within the Black Sea. In any case, being trapped in the Black Sea this time truly frightened him. That feeling of powerlessness was like he had returned to his youth in the Phoenix Cry Empire and was being bullied by others. The feeling of having all his power stripped away from him was truly frightening. Ming Kenyu took out a spear. This was the divine weapon of a god. But as soon as it touched the edge of the sword tip, it was severed. Moreover, she didn't even feel the spear being cut. She might not have noticed it if she didn't pay close attention. All of them sucked in a cold gasp of air. They had never seen such a terrifying weapon. It looks like a sword tip, but its shape is a bit odd. It could also be part of a spearhead. There is no way such a terrifying weapon is some nameless item. But it doesn't release any aura at all. Other than by seeing it, there is almost no way to sense it. It truly is bizarre. Ming Kang Yu eyed this three-inch long fragment with confusion. Such a thing was outside the scope of her understanding. Take a look. Can this thing be used? Long Chen grew excited when he saw that even the two of them were shocked by this weapon. It seemed that he had picked up a treasure this time. You got this thing through trading your life. How could we want it? Lang Yuan shook her head. Long Chen's expression stiffened. What kind of relationship did they have for her to say such a thing? Meng Kang Yu laughed. Fool, she's teasing you. Long Chen looked at Lan Yuan and truly did see a smile on her face, leaving him speechless. So even she had a teasing side. He was caught off guard. However, we truly cannot keep such a thing. It gives me a bad feeling, and it's not suitable for us. Our bone swords are our innate divine weapons, so we don't need any other weapons in this lifetime. For it to run into you like that, it must have some destiny with you. You should keep it. As long as you can make a hilt that can hold it, you will have an incomparably sharp dagger. Don't you have a more suitable person for it? said Ming Kanyu. With this reminder, Long Chen instantly thought of Dong Minjiu. For him, she had betrayed her own faith. She was that little girl that had made him into her whole life. After thinking about it, Long Chen immediately called Cheng Bong Hao over, asking him to create a wooden hilt. Now, Long Chen also suspected Cheng Bong Hao of being an expert carpenter. He instantly understood all of Long Chen's requirements. In just a short two hours, a marvelous wooden hilt was made. Two sides pressed tightly against the flat side of the broken sword. It was extremely sturdy. Just like that, an unmatched dagger was born. The shape was essentially the same as Dong Minju's old dagger. Holding this dagger in his hand, Long Chen was very pleased. Dong Minju would definitely be happy with this dagger. In her hands, it would be able to unleash its maximum potential. However, before encountering her, it would be a life-protecting trump card for him. Although Long Chen was only skilled at hacking people with his saber, this particular dagger had countless uses. At the very least, 
no formation was capable of trapping him now as for terrifying divine weapons he 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 could directly cut them apart with this dagger this was practically cheating although he had almost lost his life obtaining such a treasure in exchange could be said to be worth it after playing with the dagger long chen put it away he thought of the sea monster corpses the cores had been separated from their bodies ming kang you thought that long chen wanted to refine pills so she had specifically ordered the cores to be picked out after all those cores were treasures to the netherworld's experts the powerful cores in particular could be directly absorbed to raise their cultivation base thus those experts that ming kang you ordered to do the work practically salivated over these cores but they all knew that the cores belonged to boss long san and they could not be touched however what ming kang you hadn't expected was for long chen to ignore the cores and directly take away the corpses like they were treasures long chen couldn't tell the cultivation bases of these sea monsters however the life energy that they released was much greater than vile dragon valley's black dragons as the corpses were devoured by the black soil life energy reinvigorated the withered medicinal plants wood foundation divine trees and devil eye water lilies there were millions of these corpses it took three days until they were fully devoured in just the first day the primal chaos space was restored to its previous state furthermore long chen's wounds had fully healed on the second day the wood foundation divine trees doubled in size and bore new fruit it was the second generation wood foundation divine fruit on the third day the wood foundation divine trees were three times their original size and bloomed once more these corpses truly put in some work other than the wood foundation divine trees the devil eye water lilies also grew crazily when they reached the third tier their five lily seeds could be planted again long chen directly took out the seeds and planted more of them there was now a pool within the primal chaos space with almost a hundred devil i water lilies but they had just been planted and had only produced flower buds due to running out of corpses to urge on their growth despite that long chen was very satisfied his gains this time were rather unimaginable moreover ming kang you had gained six territories just like that those powers also had some other territories under their banners whether it was long chen or ming kang you they had profited immensely when long chen was recuperating leng yuan and ming kang you were busy taking over their new territories and gaining control over the laws of all these regions once then settled down long chen asked the two of them to accompany him in training once more this time he wanted to soar all the way to the great circle of the four peak realm chapter three thousand three hundred eighty two twelfth heaven stage of four peak long chen's jag and saber danced in the air after that kai waves soared and rumbled like the wings of a bee countless saber images appeared in the air one after another blocking the attacks of two people ling yuan and ming kang yu were like butterflies flitting between flowers their movements were completely ephemeral and impossible to grasp also their boned swords came from all directions every attack was sharp and accurate as well as perfectly timed previously long chen had to be stabbed at least once for every ten attacks now he had been fighting them for an hour without bleeding he was growing stronger and stronger attacking more and defending less he was finally starting to become capable of blocking their attacks oh long chen's jagged sword suddenly exploded as for lang yuan's sword it pointed right at long chen's chest but didn't stab through long chen hastily raised his hands in surrender ming can you apologetically said it was my fault i didn't contain my power with your current realm i really don't know what kind of power to use against you the difference between this battle and the one from last month was incredible 
It had only been a month, but all this time, Long Chen kept battling. Even Leng Yuein and Ming Kenyu were tired of it. Within this month, Long Chen had advanced twice. Maybe falling into the Black Sea had stimulated his strong instinct to survive, to the point that the peakless pills were being absorbed ten times faster than before. Now, Long Chen had reached the middle of the Twelfth Heaven stage. He was hoping to borrow their power to reach the full circle. However, he found that in the last few days, no matter how he trained, his cultivation base stagnated. Despite that, his gains during the past few days were still great. After his power soared, he was able to resist their divine pressure. There was no longer an absolute suppression that left him unable to unleash his full power. Lang Yuan and Ming Kang Yu's attacks were almost flawless. There was no way to dodge them. Only when his power was greater than theirs would he have a possibility of striking them. At the same power level, defeat was only a question of time. Although their techniques also had holes, those holes were made up for by the other. Even if you could spot an opening, you wouldn't be able to grasp it. Furthermore, if you tried and failed, that would just put you straight into a trap. This was the experience that Long Chen had gained after being stabbed thousands of times. When he reached the twelfth heaven stage, his power changed. The two of them were no longer able to fight him with power in the same realm. They had to use the power of the Nether King realm. However, if they used the power of the Nether King realm, they would automatically use the power of laws. Having gained control over so many new territories, they were in control of more laws. However, they were not used to this new power yet, so with one slip of control, they ended up using the power of those laws. As for Long Chen's saber, the mysterious sword Tip had stabbed a hole into it before, so when her bone sword struck the saber where it was weakest, it naturally broke. Long Chen smiled. It's fine. Having you two beautiful goddesses accompany me in training has allowed me to advance rapidly. I really have to thank you, too. Long Chen made a grand show of a deep bow, drawing out their laughter. It could be said that these days were the happiest ones of their lives. Long Chen's improvement was truly astonishing. Furthermore, he didn't seem affected by the Netherworld's laws. Back when they were in the same realm, their power was far lower than Long Chen's. After fighting for several more days, Long Chen's cultivation base still didn't rise. Even the peakless pills lost any effect. Long Chen's consciousness told him that the rest of the way could not be walked through ordinary means. Most likely, he would need to return to the immortal world to advance. However, exactly how he would advance was still unclear to him. Reporting to the Divine Master, the Master City has sent word of a disturbance deep in the wilderness. The void is being torn apart. It seems that some powerful experts are fighting. One of their subordinates came over with a report. The Master City was the one that Tuo Ming had set his sights on originally, the one in the wilderness that Leng Yuan and Ming Kang Yu had found through risking their lives. It was the start of their rise and had significant meaning. Thus, they decided that it would be called the Master City. The surroundings of the Master City were still unexplored wilderness, and they hadn't been cleared yet. If it hadn't been for the attention of the other six powers, Leng Yuan and Ming Kang Yu would have started marching into the wilderness. Upon hearing that there was such an intense fight, Lang Yuan and Ming Kang Yu's hearts sank slightly. If there really were such terrifying existences deep within the wilderness, that was bad news for them. If those existences attacked the city, they might lose it. Who knew? If they were so powerful, they might even expand into the surroundings and devour the rest of their new territories. Let's take a look. Long Chen, Ming Kang Yu, and Lang Yuan brought thirty Earth-tier Nether Kings with them to the Master City. They stealthily moved deep into the wilderness. Their mission was just to observe the situation, so they didn't bring too many people. 
if the other side was truly so powerful they needed to have the courage to cut off a part of their bodies if two sides were fighting then they would see if they could profit from it however on the way leng yuan and ming kang yu's expressions improved slightly it's not the aura of the nether god race but nether beasts most likely it's a battle between the nether beast tribes said ming kang yu nava loon calm seeing that long chen didn't understand she further explained that while the nether god race did control the netherworld due to their bloodline as they had the power to control the laws of the netherworld they were not necessarily the strongest race in the netherworld the world that ming kang yu controlled where life forms underwent nether passage was not exactly part of the netherworld it was just overseen by the netherworld and she had to guard the regular operation of that world through gaining control over such a world she could condense the divine core gaining control of the laws of that world the nether god race relied on the support of the netherworld's laws to cultivate right now long chen had only been in the netherworld for two months and under their training he had made consecutive advancements it seemed to be the fastest advancement of his life as for ming kang yu and leng yuan they had gone from having just advanced to the nether king realm to reaching the sixth heaven stage if using the immortal world's standards if it weren't for them spending the majority of their time and effort on helping long chen and stabilizing their new cities they would have long since reached the late stage in the nether world the nether god races realms did not grow unsteady from advancing too quickly as long as they controlled more laws they could directly advance all the way to a world master lang yuan and ming kang yu had no parents they were born from the nether world so they innately knew how to control the power of laws they were the rulers of the nether world however between fellow nether gods there were no instinctive friendly emotions if they wanted to get stronger they had to take territory from others back then ming kang yu had found herself unable to be so ruthless and had split her goodness from her body resulting in the two of them other than the nether god race the largest race in the nether world would be the nether beast race in the immortal world there were many kinds of beasts devil beasts spirit beasts auspicious beasts divine beasts immortal beasts but in the nether world there was only one kind the nether beasts all their cultivation styles were the same they devoured nether kai to strengthen themselves some members of the nether god race would even form good relationships with the nether beast race it was because nether gods wanted laws and nether kai wasn't very useful to them there was no contradiction thus after sensing the auras of nether beasts the two relaxed a great deal suddenly as they were still stealthily creeping over the sky darkened a huge figure then smashed toward them chapter three thousand three hundred eighty three underworld nether war that enormous entity flew right over long chen and the others heads it smashed a huge hole into the ground where it landed long chen saw that it was a leopard whose spots were like black clouds it was as big as a mountain its head had been smashed in as if something had struck it it then struggled in pain a few times after it landed on the ground before dying underworld cloud dark tiger race leng yuan was startled this underworld cloud dark tiger race was quite a famous race in the netherworld they had branches throughout the netherworld they were considered one of the ten strongest beast races in the netherworld and possessed supreme authority no one dared to challenge them anyone who did so would have the netherworld's millions of beast races set upon them moreover anyone that had previously provoked the underworld cloud dark tiger race had essentially been wiped out they were quite domineering and possessive originally ming kang yu had thought that it was just a normal fight between nether beasts but seeing that one side was the illustrious underworld cloud dark tiger she sensed that things weren't as simple as she had hoped long chen reached out and tossed the underworld cloud dark tiger into the primal chaos space before continuing to creep forward 
when they climbed up a tall mountain, a terrifying scene entered their eyes. Countless winged humanoid lifeforms were fighting a crazy battle against the underworld cloud dark tiger race. There were corpses as far as the eye could see. Those humanoid lifeforms were even bigger than the underworld cloud dark tigers and wielded huge clubs. With every swing of their clubs, the void was torn apart. Any underworld cloud dark tigers struck had their bones broken. At the core of the battlefield, those winged giants had clearly taken the advantage. They had surrounded and were besieging a group of underworld cloud dark tigers. The underworld cloud dark tigers were clearly weaker and unable to stop them. They were constantly killed one by one, and it seemed that the battle was already reaching its end. Nether blood giant race. They are battling the underworld cloud dark tiger race. Furthermore, it seems that they are intent on wiping them out. Is another underworld nether war starting? said Ming Kangyu in shock. What is an underworld nether war? asked Long Chen. Ah, the netherworld has millions of races, but at the roots of all of them, they can be split into two factions. One is the underworld race, and the other is the nether race. The bloodlines between the two are different and they have viewed each other as enemies for countless years. It is unknown just how many underworld nether wars sparked throughout history. However, ultimately, both sides remained evenly matched. After both sides are ground down and wounded, the war ends, and they go home to rest. Once they get strong again, they once more start a war as if they'll never get tired of it. There's essentially no way to resolve the conflict between the two sides. When they fight, they fight to wipe out the other side. It doesn't matter who attacks who. They will wipe out the other side entirely. They won't have any mercy, explained Ming Kang Yu. Only then did Long Chen learn that the netherworld actually had such a story within it. However, we don't need to worry. Whether it's the underworld race or the nether race, they don't have any direct conflicts with us. Our nether god race doesn't have any conflicting interests with them. As long as we don't join their battle, they won't make things hard on us, said Ming Kang Yu, relaxing quite a bit. Hee <laughs> that's good. Once they leave, I'll clean up the battlefield. Long Chen smiled. Such a good thing had finally come for him. His luck had taken a turn for the better. He had reached the twelfth heaven stage of the Four Peak Realm and would quickly reach the Divine Lord Realm. Then he could condense the Violet Tower Star. Those corpses should allow the Devil I Water Lilies to reach the fourth tier, and then he could start refining Violet Tower Pills. Thinking of when he would condense the Seven Star Battle Armor, Long Chen felt the burning anticipation. The six-star battle armor had followed him from the mortal world all the way to now in the immortal world. It was as sharp as ever. However, he could clearly sense that the power it gave him was starting to lag behind. It was still as sharp as ever. It was simply that his 108,000 stars had changed. Due to igniting the divine flames and possessing the new golden dragon battle armor, it could be said that the boat had risen with the tide, but the boat had not grown. Once he condensed the seven-star battle armor, Long Chen was sure that the boat would instantly become a giant ship. It would be able to soar above the starry sea of 108,000 stars. At that time, he would truly have grown tough wings. Lang Yuan and Ming Kang Yu naturally didn't join in the fight. Just watching was excellent. There were no buildings or constructions nearby, meaning that there were no gods in the surroundings. Otherwise, the gods would probably already be allied with the underworld cloud dark tiger race. After all, the support of the underworld cloud dark tiger race would make it so that an ordinary person wouldn't dare to touch them. This was further proof that no other gods had discovered this land. That was a good thing for Long Chen and the others. Furious roars continued to shake the heavens, but Long Chen quietly watched. Seeing the endless corpses, he almost started drooling. 
other than Leng Yuan and Ming Kang Yu, Long Chen didn't have any good feelings about the netherworld. The netherworld had once invaded the immortal world and could be considered the immortal world's enemy. Moreover, a fellow from the netherworld had also fought Long Chen for the heavenly rainbow flame. He asked Lang Yuan and Ming Kang Yu how it was possible for the netherworld's life forms to enter the immortal world. Their answer was that they could only cross in places where the wall between the netherworld and the immortal world was weak. When the spatial energy was at its weakest, it was possible to force open a channel. However, opening that channel required a huge amount of resources, and also required the backer of someone on the level of a world king. Furthermore, such a channel was unstable. Only lower-level cultivators could pass through. There was a realm and power restriction, so stronger people were unable to pass through those small channels. Otherwise, they would cause the entire channel to crumble. Everyone within it would then be sucked into the chaotic flow of space. Long Chen had been hoping that the two of them could open a path for him as well. Then, he would be able to return to the immortal world. But it seemed that this wasn't possible. It seemed that if he wanted to return to the immortal world now, his only option would be to enter the chaotic flow of space again. But the exits were not stable. What if he was stuck inside for centuries without running into a place where space happened to be collapsing in a good spot? He didn't want to use that method. But after he obtained that mysterious broken sword, he felt that there was hope. He just still hadn't figured out how to use it best. Moreover, he also didn't want to part with the two of them. The two of them depended on the netherworld to live. Because of this, Long Chen was unable to relax considering that they were threatened by many things, so he was still waiting. After two hours, the battle ended. All the underworld cloud dark titers were slain, and those giants gathered, seemingly counting their numbers. They then gathered the corpses of their people and prepared to leave. However, when they flew up, one of them spotted Long Chen and the others. It was originally just a random glance that meant nothing. However, that fellow then took a second look at Long Chen and suddenly pointed at him, shouting, all the giants suddenly charged over at them and instantly surrounded them. Chapter 3384 Another Blood Giant It's Him No doubt, those giants instantly focused on Long Chen as if they had found a treasure. Warriors of the Nether Blood Giant race, you wouldn't be making things hard for us, right? Asked Ming Kang Yu cautiously. No, no. The nether god race and us can simply mind each other's business. How could we make things hard on you? Their leader shook his giant head and pointed a huge finger at Long Chen. Tell me, are you Long Chen? Despite lowering his voice, that giant's voice was still oppressive. It was like his vocal cords were too big, so his voice shook the air. This giant had an overwhelming blood kai pressure. His aura was definitely not at all inferior to a heaven-tiered nether king. Furthermore, there were dozens of others beside him with similar auras. It was no wonder even an existence as powerful as the underworld cloud dark tiger race would be exterminated so quickly. Yes, I am Long Chen. Long Chen was startled along with Lang Yuan and Ming Kang Yu. How could the nether blood giant race know his name? Then, there's definitely no doubt. The nether blood giant race is loyal to the heavenly king. So, the heavenly king has said that he owes a debt to Long Chen, and that no one can make things hard on him. Furthermore, anyone who obtains news of him will be rewarded heavily. Just before, a fellow from the three-eyed race said that he encountered you in the immortal world. When he told the heavenly king, the heavenly king was delighted and bestowed a divine treasure upon him. I didn't expect that we would also run into you. Long Chen, you must come with us to see the heavenly king, said this leader of the nether blood giant race emotionally. He even went on one knee, offering Long Chen a sacred and ancient courtesy. His eyes were begging him. 
is that heavenly king of yours the fellow with three heads and a body that covers the heavens asked long chen his heart jumping yes that is our heavenly king the leader hastily nodded he was even happier to hear that now they were definitely sure about him as for Ling Yuein and Ming Kang Yu, they instantly understood. Back, when Long Chen was going through the nether passage world and about to return to the martial heaven continent, he came before the gates of hell. He then ended up stealing the door knockers from it. Those were seals, and once they were removed, a giant beast broke free, escaping from the laws binding it. Ming Kang Yu and Leng Yuan had known that there was a three headed heaven devouring beast sealed behind the gates of hell, but they were only overseers of the laws there. They weren't qualified to peer into those secrets, nor did they have the ability to change those laws. Thus, even if that beast escaped, it couldn't be said to be their fault. However, due to that beast creating havoc in that nether passage world, their cultivation was affected. At that time, they were under the administration of some superior nether gods and were in a dangerous spot. In truth, the reason the two of them had taken the risk of searching for a new stronghold was related to that three-headed heaven-devouring beast. However, they hadn't expected that this beast would actually break free of the laws of the nether passage world and enter the nether world even being in charge of the nether blood giant race. That was astonishing. Long Chen, our heavenly king, is someone who cares deeply about debts. He definitely has no malice toward you. There's absolutely nothing for you to fear. Please come with us, pleaded their leader. All right, then I'll go visit your heavenly king. However, I want to gather the corpses on the ground first. They are very useful to me said Long Chen. Long Chen also wanted to see just what kind of existence this heavenly king was. Furthermore, Long Chen had helped him escape from his seal. Theoretically, the latter shouldn't have any bad feelings toward Long Chen. His agreement delighted the nether blood giant race. They immediately returned to the battlefield and helped Long Chen gather all the corpses. There were mountains of them, and he tossed them directly into the primal chaos space. Long Chen, if that heavenly king asks you to join his camp, you absolutely cannot agree. The three-headed heaven devouring beast is one of the desolate era's devil species. They possess the will to destroy the heavenly Daos. Now that he has been released, he will definitely start a bloody retribution. That will provoke countless powerful enemies. He himself is strong enough to ignore them, but if you are also implicated, it might spell great trouble for you even if you return to the immortal world, transmitted Ming Kang Yu. All right, I'll listen to my wife. Long Chen smiled at Ming Kang Yu. Seeing that he obediently listened, Ming Kang Yu and Ling Yue and relaxed. The two of them knew some secrets of the three-headed heaven devouring beast. While they didn't know the whole story, that existence was definitely too dangerous. It would be best not to come into contact with him too much. However, the nether blood giants had recognized Long Chen. If he didn't go and they became hostile, Long Chen and the others wouldn't be a match for them. Originally, Ming Kang Yu and Ling Yuan also wanted to go. However, someone needed to look after their home. If they only left one person, then they wouldn't be able to fight with their combination technique. Long Chen did not feel good about that, so he decided to go on his own. Once the battlefield was cleaned up, the nether blood giant's leader placed Long Chen on his own shoulder. Long Chen then waved goodbye to Leng Yuan and Ming Kang Yu, indicating for them to be at ease. Only then did they leave. With their giant bodies, they crossed a thousand miles with a step. Long Chen instantly lost sight of the two women. With Long Chen gone, Leng Yuan and Ming Kang Yu looked at each other, seeing the reluctance in each other's eyes. Hopefully, that three-headed heaven-devouring beast doesn't have any ill will toward Long Chen, sighed Ming Kang Yu. She found that she was still too weak. 
she was powerless to go against the flow of the netherworld. He doesn't have ill will toward Long Chen. Instead, Leng Yuan actually had a greater worry appear within her heart. Instead what? asked Ming Kang Yu. Instead, those two fellows might end up becoming brothers. Whether it is Long Chen or the three-headed heaven-devouring beast, they both possess an intense destructive will. Although Long Chen has always been suppressing his desire to destroy, I'm afraid that if he sees that fellow, this desire would be unleashed. When both of those destructive fellows are together, it'll be like a bee seeing honey. Once they meet, it might be difficult for them to ever part, said Leng Yuan. She had interacted with Long Chen more than Ming Kang Yu and knew more about his contradictory nature. Moreover, he had given rise to a heart devil and had the ghost sovereign's mark on him. And now, he was going to see a three-headed heaven-devouring beast. It seemed that Long Chen was walking further and further on a dark path. She was afraid that he might not return from that path one day. It's fine. We still have time. Long Chen brought us good luck, so we should hurry and reach the world master realm. Once we become world masters, we can control the life energy of the nether passage worlds. After that, we'll have truly reached the point where we can stand tall in the nether world. We still have a long way to go. Once we get stronger, Long Chen won't have to be in so much danger, said Ming Kang Yu. Lang Yuan nodded. Holding hands, the two of them vanished along with their trusted aides. Chapter 3385 waited a long time, for Yu Long Chen sat on the shoulder of the leader of the nether blood giants. They sped across the land. When they encountered the Black Sea, they simply ran across the surface of the water without a care. Are you not afraid of the fiend spirits beneath the sea? asked Long Chen curiously. They don't dare to bite us. With the heavenly king behind us, as long as we don't attack them, they won't provoke us, said the leader with a smile. They were all delighted that Long Chen was coming with them. They were very courteous to him. Is your heavenly king really so powerful? asked Long Chen, feeling surprised. It seemed that the heavenly king was even more frightening than he had anticipated. The leader proudly said, The heavenly king is from a noble desolate species, and he possesses an undying indestructible body. He was sealed in a nether passage world in his youth, precisely because he couldn't even be killed. They could only use this method to seal him forever. But they didn't expect that the heavenly king's power would continue to grow over time. However, being trapped in the nether passage world, he couldn't unleash his power. Then you lifted the seal. Although it was just one of the 108,000 seals on him, he finally had a way to unleash his power. Targeting that broken seal, he charged out of his prison. The three-headed heaven-devouring beast race can be said to be the emperor race of our nether race. Now we are regrouping, preparing to fight against the underworld race. You've also seen how we won't leave those of the underworld race alive. Hearing that, Long Chen understood why they would follow the so-called Heavenly King. It seemed that they were all on the same side. Ming Kang Yu had told him that the underworld and nether races were constantly at odds with each other. There was no way to resolve the enmity between the two sides. Perhaps it was precisely due to this that she had warned him not to join the Heavenly King's forces. That was to avoid being drawn into the war between the two sides. The Nether Race and the Underworld Race fought their own battle, while the Netherbod Race didn't interfere. It had been so for countless years. Ming Kang Yu was profoundly aware of just how terrifying the foundations of those two races were. As they rushed across the land, Long Chen spotted many cities. In some of those cities, experts noticed them running by and bowed to them in greeting. Moreover, those experts weren't afraid. They didn't even activate the grand formation. However, when they spotted Long Chen sitting on the shoulder of the leader of the nether blood giants, those experts were all shocked. 
Long Chen saw countless ancient cities on the way, but he saw far more areas of wilderness. When Long Chen asked about it, the Lear told him that the region they were in was considered wilderness. It was said that a terrifying battle had been fought in ancient times, and it had shattered the laws of the heavenly Daos in the netherworld. No life forms appeared in that region for millions and millions of years. It was only in the past few hundred years that the netherworld's self recovery ability started to return those crumbled laws back to their previous state. Hence, this wilderness could now be cleared and reclaimed. Even so, true experts didn't care about this wilderness. In the process of the heavenly Tao's repairing themselves, the laws of the netherworld in this region were no longer as complete. Moreover, just like clearing wilderness, it took time and energy to take over these regions. Only rogue cultivators with no foundations would run over here to gnaw on what little bones remained. As for true experts, they were at the core, fighting for territory. The core region's laws were complete and more suitable for cultivation. Whether it was the nether god race or the underworld and nether races, unless they had something to do in this place, they wouldn't run over to the wilderness. As for the nether blood giants, they had come so far because they were wiping out the underworld race. They wanted to create a world devoid of their existence. This was the mission that the Heavenly King had given them. The Heavenly King wanted to create a holy place for those that were hunted down and persecuted by the underworld race, a place for them to peacefully rest. This particular group was nothing more than one branch of millions of squads. The other squads were still working in other regions. The core region had essentially been cleaned up, and now they were simply dealing with leftovers at the edges here. After rushing for a full day, Long Chen saw a giant city up ahead. Here, he felt like he had entered the world of giants. He was as tiny as an ant. This giant city was packed with nether blood giants. After entering the city, an elder of their race with a golden crown quickly came out. Despite being mentally prepared, Long Chen's heart still skipped a beat. This person's aura was actually somewhat similar to Imputa. It went without saying that he was also an expert on the level of a world king. Moreover, this expert actually greeted Long Chen in a very friendly manner. Through his introduction, Long Chen learned that he was the leader of this nether blood giant tribe. That shocked Long Chen. Just the tribe leader of a random branch was already on the level of a world king. That was astonishing. It was no wonder that the three-eyed fellow that appeared in the Chu family's territory had told Long Chen to come to the netherworld with him and join the side of the Heavenly King. This world king was also extremely reverent toward the Heavenly King. From this, it could be seen just how high the Heavenly King's position was. After saying a few courteous words, that tribe leader gave some orders, and over ten people came to escort Long Chen. Those people all had auras even more terrifying than the leader of nether blood giants that had found Long Chen. From their tone, it seemed that they were afraid of some accident occurring, so they came to protect him. This world had essentially been taken over by the nether race, but they were still so cautious. It could be seen just how important they viewed Long Chen to be. This new group then set out of the city. The Black Sea appeared before them again, stretching far beyond the horizon. But this time, they didn't directly run across and obediently crossed with a giant ship. When Long Chen asked about this, he was told that this sea region was considered a special domain. There was a terrifying existence beneath it. In order to express their reverence toward it, they didn't randomly run across this region. They used ships. On the way, Long Chen found that the world here was truly different from Leng Yuan and Ming Kangyu's territories. Although Long Chen didn't understand the laws of the netherworld, he could sense that the aura of the netherworld had increased in density by dozens of times. Based on that, he hypothesized 
that this place could be considered the core of a star field. It was no wonder that the place Lang Yuan was at was considered wilderness and not cared about by true experts. The difference was truly stark. The ship had no sail or runes supporting it. They crossed the sea by relying on the paddling of two nether blood giants. But they were like an arrow shot from a bow, shooting across the sea even faster than their speed before. They spent two whole days paddling before seeing the other shore. Once they were on land, the nether blood giants made hand seals. After that, runes glowed on their bodies, and they suddenly shrank until they were only slightly taller than Long Chen. However, once they shrank, the power of their blood kai was mostly sealed. This form was most likely not suited to combat. They escorted Long Chen to a place where countless life forms were gathered. The life forms stretched far beyond their vision. But at the front of this group was a tall, muscular man with overflowing blood kai and a bald head. Long Chen, I've waited a long time for you. The large man opened his mouth. As soon as he spoke, space quivered as if the entire star field reverberated with his voice. He was the ruler of this world, the one who looked down on all others. His words could not be defied. Chapter 3386 Wu Tian This large bald man wore blood-colored armor and had a blood-colored spear on his back. He had a third vertical eye. When it blinked, lightning runes flashed. The power to destroy heaven and earth was contained within it. On each of his shoulder pads, there was a sinister face, and they looked like heads. Standing there, he seemed to be the ruler of the netherworld. Despite standing on the same level as him, Long Chen had a feeling as if he was looking far up at a deity. This person was far too powerful, so powerful that it seemed like a single thought from him could kill Long Chen, as if a single thought could destroy the heavens. Long Chen had never seen such a terrifying existence before. Just being looked at by him, Long Chen felt incredibly weak. He had never felt so weak before. It was like an ant facing a dragon. That was how big the difference was. I'm sure that to yourself, this little bit of time is nothing more than a wave of a finger, said Long Chen. The bald man shook his head. That is incorrect. While I was trapped in that damnable place, I have long since forgotten the concept of time. But after escaping, it's different. I, Wu Qian, have never owed anyone any favors in this lifetime. So, I won't be able to rest in peace if I don't return this favor. Ever since escaping my prison, there have only been two thoughts on my mind. One is revenge, and the other one is to repay this favor. Although you did it inadvertently, I still owe you a huge debt speak. What do you desire? As long as you say it, I, Wu Tian, will help you accomplish it even if it costs me my life. This person who called himself Wu Tian was precisely the heavenly king. He was also the three-headed heaven-devouring beast that Long Chen had released after stealing the door of knobs of the gates of hell. This terrifying expert said that he would help Long Chen accomplish his heart's desire. Long Chen instantly had a thought. What if he had Wu Chen help him kill Lord Brahma? However, just as that thought rose, it was crushed by his next thought. Lord Brahma was the one who had caused the Pill Fairy's death, and also the deaths of all those people in the Martial Heaven Continent. This enmity could not be avenged by others, not while he could do it himself. If he let someone else do it, would he still be a man? Long Chen's pride refused to allow him to do such a thing. After thinking about it, he simply shook his head. Right now, I don't need anything that big. If you feel like you owe me a debt, you can simply send me back to the immortal world. Then neither of us will owe the other anything. Are you looking down on me? What a trifling matter. How can it cancel out my debt? Do you want to turn me into the laughingstock of the netherworld? Wu Tian's expression sank. Following his shout, the clouds in the sky changed color and lightning boomed. 
the originally clear sky instantly turned dark and gloomy it was as if the very heavens were about to collapse after that the ten thousand dows rumbled as if the entire world was angered and an explosive pressure crashed down as a result all the life forms of the netherworld regardless of cultivation base instantly knelt on the ground shaking the stone bricks beneath long chen's feet shattered as for long chen he felt a powerful current crashing down on him to the point that his spine was about to break he was being made to kneel just like those other life forms this terrifying pressure made him roar is whether or not you're turned into a laughing stock my damn business i can handle my own affairs and i don't need your help this Wu tian was completely unreasonable he actually turned hostile faster than the flipping of a page using his pressure to try and make long chen kneel long chen's fury instantly exploded who cared about his status he directly cursed the other party if you don't ask for something my heart won't be at ease and i won't be able to sleep it's even worse than being trapped in that nether passage world no matter what you must ask me for something today wu tian also roared his voice causing the stars in the sky to quiver long chen felt like all the stars of the heavens were pressing down on him but he knew that this was a misperception this was purely wu tian's will wu tian's will was the will of this world here he was the master of the heavenly Tao's, the lord of the star field all beings had to listen to him long chen's fury rose this fellow actually used such a method to suppress him making him submit this was practically repaying his favor with enmity Boop. the ground beneath long chen's foot then collapsed cracks were spreading in every direction even beyond the horizon but the others didn't even dare to look they were still quivering on the ground only long chen alone stood facing wu tian although he had a splitting headache although his soul was in danger of crumbling he ultimately glared back at wu tian fearlessly spatial cracks appeared around long chen those were the result of long chen's will clashing with wu tian's it was affecting the heavenly Tao's. after a while long chen's vision started to turn dark just as he thought that he was about to die that immense pressure vanished with the pressure gone he almost collapsed on the ground but a hand caught him and kept him steady it was wu tian oh wu tian laughed his voice like thunder he patted long chen's shoulder good brother starting today you are my brother wu tian's brother let's go have a drink with your big brother long chen's head was shaken just by the sound of his laughter adding on how his mind was still unclear from clashing so intensely against wu tian's will he didn't even know how he was dragged away by the time he had recovered his wits slightly he found himself in a glorious palace but within this giant palace only he and wu tian were present once the two of them sat down other experts came in bringing delicacies and wine after the food and drink were placed on the table wu tian waved his hand and those experts all left brother i was rude to you just now this drink is raised for you with respect and you can take it as my apology don't blame your big brother wu tian poured out a bowl of golden wine and offered it to long chen he raised his own bowl of wine with his other hand long chan was still befuddled and looked at wu tian oddly had he been imprisoned for so long that his head had stopped functioning properly however seeing his sincere expression long chen didn't say anything he simply raised his bowl of wine and drank it as a result as soon as this wine reached his stomach steam exploded out of his eyes nose and ears tears and mucus dripped from his face altogether long chen felt like he had just drunk lava that lava exploded within his stomach and its energy charged out of his orifices he felt his nasal cavity open in all directions ah wu tian laughed once more long chen knew that he had been conned 
Are you toying with me? raged Long Chen, lifting the table and smashing it at Wu Tian. However, the table simply crumbled into dust before it even reached Wu Tian. Ha ha ha, this temper is good. You have gups. Only like this are you qualified to be my brother. Wu Tian laughed delightedly. However, after smashing the table, Long Chen realized that all the side effects of resisting Wu Tian's will had vanished after that drink. He realized that this wine truly did come with good intentions, so he was slightly embarrassed. Favorite Chapter 3387 Undying Indestructible Race Wu Tian laughed. Seeing Long Chen's embarrassment, he immediately ordered people to set the table again with food and drink. Good brother, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. Men like us should simply follow our heart's desire instead of hiding it within the night. I like that character of yours because I have the same kind of temper. Just drink some more wine. This wine was brewed by the dark underworld spirit monkey race. It's been in the wine cellar for thirty million years now. Back then, it was that group of monkeys that conned me. Now I've wiped out their entire race. Those monkeys might be hateful, but at least their winemaking ability isn't bad. After wiping them out, I found their wine stash, and I've never shared it with anyone until now. Have a good taste of it. It might not have a good taste in the mouth, but it's actually quite good for the body, especially for the current you. It will solidify your foundation and cause a noticeable improvement in your soul. Moreover, this wine contains the laws of the netherworld. You've been cultivating in the netherworld for a while, and you can already borrow a portion of the netherworld's heavenly Tao's power. So, after drinking this wine, you will grow even closer to the netherworld's laws. Perhaps one day you can also control the power of the netherworld's laws, said Wu Tian. He personally poured more wine for Long Chen. This time, Long Chen received it with both hands. He hadn't expected Wu Tian to care so much about him. He was quite protective, making Long Chen feel very moved. All right, then Junior Brother will cherish Big Brother's wine. Long Chen didn't say any superfluous words. Just with their brief interaction, he already knew what kind of character Wu Tian had. Ah ha good, good brother. Wu Tian laughed and raised his own bowl, drinking it all. This time, Long Chen was prepared. Although he almost choked, he was able to keep this wine down. Sensing it carefully this time, he found that the wine was like medicinal liquor. It spread throughout every inch of his body, and he felt the repulsion of the netherworld's laws weaken around him. Although Lang Yuan had helped him get accustomed to the aura of the netherworld, that was mostly in their area. Now, he was closer to the core of the netherworld. As he wasn't a life form of the netherworld, there was naturally a rejection. The heavenly Daos here wouldn't help him or allow him to use them. Just the fact that they didn't work against him was all thanks to Lang Yuan and Ming Kang Yu's blessing. In this place, Long Chen could clearly feel the heavenly Tao starting to suppress him. The laws here were different from where Lang Yuan was. However, after drinking two bowls of wine, he felt the heavenly Tao's grow closer to him. Perhaps, just as Wu Tian said, one day Long Chen might be able to control the power of the netherworld as well. If that really was the case, in the future, when netherworld experts invaded the immortal world, Long Chen would have the power of both worlds to fight against them. Then wouldn't he be able to beat those invaders like beating children? By the time he drank his third bowl, his expression didn't even change. Although some of the wine energy did try to surge out of him, Long Chen had plenty of experience with drinking wine. On the Martial Heaven continent, he had always been drinking the wine of the Wine God Palace, so he had quite the capacity for liquor. However, this wine was simply truly powerful. Eat some food first, said Wu Tian when he saw Long Chen starting to become overwhelmed by the wine. The foods on the table were the greatest delicacies of the netherworld. 
However, Long Chen didn't even taste them. His mouth was full of the flavor of the wine. Big brother, can you tell me how you ended up trapped in that forsaken place? Asked Long Chen. After being a bit overwhelmed by this wine, he didn't have any restraints and directly got to the point. Fuck, just thinking about it enraged me. My three-headed heaven-devouring beast is the emperor race of the netherworld. When a battle erupted in the netherworld, we were betrayed by a group of bastards, and their sneak attack caused us to collapse. That battle relates to the secrets of the nine heavens and ten lands, so I can't tell you about it. The karma is truly enormous and will harm you. But in that battle, our members were captured and imprisoned. That's because we have undying bodies. Even if our bodies and souls are erased, we will be reborn with our memories of that life. Hence, even though we were defeated, they had to imprison us, not kill us. At that time, I was very young. My cultivation base was even lower than your current realm. After being captured, I was sealed inside a plane of the Nether Passage world. I was there first, and only afterward did that plane arise. Over trillions of years, I watched as worlds were destroyed and reborn, and then destroyed and reborn again. I don't know how many cycles I saw. That pack of fools thought that sealing me this way would stop my cultivation base from progressing, but as I witnessed the laws of the world work, despite not being able to move, I was able to use one of my divine arts. Although my cultivation speed was slow, I was still capable of cultivating. However, the seal could not be broken from inside. No matter how great my power grew, I couldn't break free. So you really helped me out. Originally, I owed you a great debt. But since we're brothers, we're not going to talk about such a thing. Drink. Seeing that Long Chen had gotten a bit more accustomed to this wine, Wu Tian poured more wine into their bowls and drank. Big brother, you really are amazing. If I was trapped for so long, I'd have gone insane. Even if I didn't go crazy, I'd definitely be consumed by killing intent and other negative emotions. There's no way I could be like Big Brother, praised Long Chen. If Long Chen was trapped like that and one day did escape, he would go on a crazy slaughter. He would definitely be consumed by vengeance and turn into a homicidal, wild devil. There was no way he could have Wu Tian's current suavies. Do you know why I tested you in front of the city? asked Wu Tian. Long Chen shook his head. Wu Tian once more filled their wine bowls. When Long Chen tried to reach out to the wine pot, he was stopped by Wu Tian. He personally poured their wine. My three-headed heaven-devouring beast race possesses a noble bloodline. We don't like owing others, so I did everything to find you just to return this favor. This is my race's pride. When you received the pressure of my will, that was my innate divine ability. It allowed me to deduce your future accomplishments. If your life wasn't tough enough, then at most I would only help you once. Once your heart's desire was achieved, this favor would be returned, and we would not be brothers. If your life was not tough enough, being brothers with me would implicate you badly. To repay someone's favor with calamity is definitely not a thing my race would do, said Wu Tian. Then, big brother, can you tell what realm my cultivation base can reach in the future? Asked Long Chen excitedly. If he had obtained Wu Tian's approval from that test, then it meant that he had to have a terrifying potential for growth. Wu Tian shook his head. Normally, under the pressure of this divine ability, when others resist, there is a flexibility and elasticity that allows me to judge a person's upper cultivation limit. But you had no such thing. You resisted with pure brute power without the slightest flexibility, a determination to rather break than bend. I didn't dare to push you any further, so I couldn't see your future. But I really do like this character of yours. We two brothers have many similarities, just like real brothers. 
that destructive power deep within your soul makes me feel particularly close to you so who cares a damn about karma i don't if you die then big brother will simply get revenge for you wu tian smiled he grew more and more fond of this new brother of his it was like he regretted not meeting long chen earlier he suddenly laughed brother i have a gift for you wu tian clapped his hands and over ten large figures walked into the palace chapter three thousand three hundred eighty eight brothers long chan eyed the group of large men with long hair that just walked in they all shared one thing in common they were exceptionally thick their arms were almost as thick as long chan's waist and their blood kai was so powerful it was like it was about to explode they gave long chen a sense of immense pressure although it wasn't the aura of world kings they were definitely stronger than ordinary heaven tier immortal kings most likely they were half a step into the world king level long chen nodded at these men his brother truly had many powerful subordinates any one of them was an exceptional expert seeing long chen nodding wu tian laughed and patted his shoulder he happily said brother your vision is good these are all the elite women i've picked out they aren't just peerlessly beautiful but their talent is also amazing they have limitless potential i was going to pick one of them as my imperial consort but since you've taken a liking to them just tell me i'll let you pick from them if you want them all you can also take them away Bo dies. long chen's eyes almost popped out of their sockets these long-haired muscular men in his eyes were actually women looking more carefully they did seem to have some feminine traits but it was very unclear they were almost twice as tall as long chen was and their expressions were very natural they clearly looked down on this little fellow before them in their eyes long chen was far too weak clearly wu tian possessed absolute authority and no one dared to go against his will but there was no way that their inner fluctuations could escape long chen's senses brother no need to rush pick carefully said wu tian generously long chen almost wept that wasn't from emotion but fear his scalp turned numb big brother you really are my big brother let's discuss this later eh are you trying to be courteous with your big brother wu tian's expression sank he thought that long chen was simply being courteous in his view these beauties with limitless potential were priceless treasures allowing long chen to pick them proved just how sincere his brotherly feelings were toward long chen brother as brothers there's no need for me to be courteous right the main thing is that our taste in beauties is different i really can't accept it spare your little brother said long chen practically begging he was very moved by wu tian's favor but this was definitely impossible to accept you prefer those with no meat on their bodies asked wu tian in surprise uh, not exactly i just have a different sense of aesthetics if i find someone that i like there's no need for you to offer them to me i'll win them myself said long chen all right then since long chen didn't like these beauties wu tian could only drop it he waved those beauties away they sighed with relief as they left long chen himself also sighed that had truly been frightening brother my people have reported your matters to me your relationship with those two sisters of the nether god race is important yes why not have them come to my city here their cultivation speeds will soar said wu tian naturally he was referring to lang yuan and ming kang yu considering their positions they naturally didn't enter his eyes that was why he wanted to find long chen better partners but if long chen didn't like his beauties he wouldn't force it he could help him through other means no need they are very proud 
let alone you, they don't even want my help. They have said that they wish to rely on themselves, said Long Chen. Long Chen also didn't want to bring the two of them here. Wu Chen had just escaped the nether passage world and was preparing for revenge. His foundation was still not stable, and there were too many unknown factors. Ming Kang Yu herself had warned Long Chen not to join Wu Tian's side precisely due to this. If he said the truth, it would be hurtful, so he made up an excuse. That's fine. The Nether God race has the innate ability to control the laws of the Netherworld. They are a race chosen by the heavens. There's really no need for others to help them, said Wu Tian, nodding. After thinking about it, Wu Tian spoke with a rather vexed tone, Brother, you don't want anything I'm offering. You're making things hard on your big brother. Why is it so difficult for you to accept my gift? Hum, why don't you consider those beauties? Their constitutions are special. You can even bring them to the immortal world to cultivate. In the worst case, they could simply be your guards. Long Chen had helped him out. Although the two could already be considered brothers, it still felt as if he hadn't given Long Chen anything, leaving him with no face. Long Chen quickly said, Brother, you're too courteous. Don't mention this matter again. I can't accept your gift. But the divine weapons of the netherworld will be affected by the laws of the immortal world if they are brought there. You can't use them. You could cultivate some of our techniques, but once you return to the immortal world, those techniques would no longer have the support of the laws of the netherworld, making them worthless. Long Chen had a thought. Brother, do you have some beast corpses? I truly desire them. What would you want such a thing for? Asked Wu Tian. Uh, in any case, I really need them. If it's convenient for you, help me gather some. There was no way Long Chen could mention the primal chaos space. But he also didn't want to lie. He simply avoided the question. That is no problem. We are currently tidying up some underworld races, and may battlefields have yet to be cleaned up. I'll have someone bring them to you, said Wu Tian. Many thanks, big brother. Those things are extremely important to me. Come, big brother, let me offer you a bowl as well. Long Chen directly drank all the wine in his bowl. Seeing how happy Long Chen was, Wu Tian was also happy. Although he didn't know why Long Chen wanted corpses, he felt much more comfortable knowing that he could help Long Chen. Wu Tian asked Long Chen some questions about the immortal world. Long Chen replied simply about the matter with himself and Lord Brahma. Wu Tian frowned slightly. I have heard of Lord Brahma. It is rumored that the Battle of the Nine Heavens was related to him. But I was still young at that time. I wasn't qualified to participate in the affairs of my race yet, so I'm not clear on the details of that battle. He has lived for countless years. I remember that back then he had won the title of Divine Venerate, becoming a famous existence within all the nine heavens and ten lands. So many years have gone by since then. Perhaps he has stepped into higher realms. You must be careful of him, warned Wu Tian. Wu Tian was also an existence that had lived for countless years. However, he was still classified as Brahma's junior. Long Chen was shocked. He hadn't expected Lord Brahma to have such fame. Could it really be that he had stepped into higher realms? Brother, are you sure that you wish to be enemies with him? Wu Tian looked at Long Chen seriously. Chapter 3389 Like-minded Long Chen nodded. This person caused my lover to die. He was also responsible for the death of many of my hot-blooded brothers and my respected seniors. The enmity between us is absolutely irreconcilable. He might control the majority of the immortal world, but I am not afraid. There will come a day when I cut off his head destroy all hindrances and create the world that I want. Long Chen clenched his fists. His hatred for Lord Brahma was carved into his soul. 
it didn't matter if the latter was a divine venerate or even higher this enmity had to be avenged but wu tan slapped his leg and laughed thunderously as expected of my good brother our thinking really is the same i also want to topple the netherworld and kill the leaders of the netherworld back then my three-headed heaven devouring beast race sacrificed so much for the netherworld but what did we gain in exchange i will smash apart this netherworld and rebuild a world that i want ha 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 good brother have another drink long chen and wu chan once more emptied their bowls long chen felt extremely happy wu tan was so powerful but rather than mocking him he praised long chen for his wish long chen was moved the two of them exchanged a look and laughed long chen didn't know how much wine he had drunk in the end ultimately he collapsed on the table and lost consciousness when he woke up he found himself on a large bed he was surrounded by four burly men no four burly women being stared at by the four of them long chen felt a chill faking his calm he asked how long have i been sleeping where is big brother wu chan you slept for seven days the heavenly king led the warriors to attack the kuwu star field three days ago answered one of them although it was a woman's voice it was very rough her voice shook long chen's ears a beauty like this is probably something only big brother wu chan can enjoy long chen was speechless inside as expected different races had different senses of beauty brother you've awakened just then a powerful voice rang out wu tian had actually returned even before he arrived a bloody scent already reached them wu tian was covered in blood and he had a spear on his back a domineering aura still soared out of him he had clearly just fought a bloody battle there were runes flowing on the bloodstains on his body the pressure coming from that blood even gave long chen's soul a piercing pain long chen was shocked that was clearly the pressure of a world king the blood on wu chen's body actually belonged to a world king furthermore there were different spots of blood belonging to different life forms big brother you went out to fight while leaving junior brother to just sleep that's not right said long chen a bit shamefully their wine drinking session had truly been satisfying this time wu tian's character had many similarities to long chen's being with him was like being with a brother of multiple lifetimes long chen didn't need to hold anything back with him on that day the two of them had been talking and drinking to the point that long chen had forgotten what he had said he had absolute confidence in this good brother however although his alcohol tolerance wasn't bad his realm was too low he couldn't handle that powerful wine so he was unconscious for a full seven days now that he was awake he felt incredibly refreshed it felt like he was full of power and he could no longer sense the repulsion of the heavenly dows he didn't feel any different here than in the immortal world that was the benefit of the wine ha 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 this place isn't the immortal world how are you supposed to fight i simply took advantage of while you were sleeping to prepare a small gift for you um the world around them changed long chen and wu tian then appeared on top of the ancient city gates countless beast corpses were piled up outside the walls at the very front were seven giant corpses their pressure made long chen's soul quake there were actually seven beast corpses on the level of a nether king these were earth dragon monsters their tails were like scorpion stingers big brother you long chen was shocked and moved even his eyes reddened a bit you want corpses so i can't bring out trash a gift for my brother must reach a certain level at least it just so happened that my next target was that star field i simply launched the attack a bit in advance achieving two goals with one move said wu tian 
Back when Long Chen had said that he wanted corpses, Wu Qian had felt that Long Chen was just trying to give him a way out. However, later, Long Chen had drunk too much. When Wu Tian asked him again what those corpses were for, due to already being completely drunk, Long Chen ended up vaguely saying that they were the foundation for him to raise his cultivation base. He lost consciousness afterward. Wu Tian had been invigorated as soon as he heard that and directly summoned his army. They stopped cleaning up the surviving dregs and directly launched an attack on a new location. When Long Chen awoke, Wu Tian was already back with the spoils of battle. Long Chen really did want to cry from gratitude. It seemed that in all these years, other than the five sovereigns, no one had ever given him such a feeling. Big brother, I won't say any superfluous words. Long Chen took a deep breath and remembered this favor in his heart. Long Chen put away the corpses. These countless giant corpses were something that would take the black soil a long time to finish devouring. It had to be known that all these corpses had at least reached the immortal king level. The lower level corpses weren't even able to enter Wu Tian's eyes. As for those seven scorpion dragons, Long Chen didn't toss them into the black soil. He placed them to the side for now. This was a special species within the netherworld. Their power was truly terrifying. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to become the overlords of a star field. Long Chen kept them aside, feeling like their corpses might be useful for other things. Considering the number of corpses, even with the primal chaos space's devouring ability, it would take at least half a month to devour them all. Long Chen wasn't planning on tossing them all into the black soil at once. He wanted them to be absorbed bit by bit. The corpses of the underworld cloud dark tigers had made the wood foundation divine trees bear the second generation of fruit. With so many corpses, if they were all added at once, Long Chen wouldn't have time to pick all the fruit. They would fall to the ground and rot, turning into new seeds. However, Long Chen didn't need those seeds. He wanted the fruit. So, he had the soil absorb the corpses bit by bit as he kept an eye on the wood foundation divine trees. Brother, once Long Chen put away the corpses, Wu Tian patted his shoulder. He sighed, it's not that big brother doesn't want to keep you, but you must leave. What is it? asked Long Chen in surprise. Have you not noticed? Your aura is fluctuating. You are now prepared to reach the next realm. However, you are from the immortal world, so you can't make your breakthrough here in the netherworld. If you stay here for too long, it will harm your foundation. You must return to the immortal world, said Wu Tian. Only then did Long Chen realize that after awakening, he had reached the great circle of Four Peak. Furthermore, his aura was undulating. He had entered a very strange state. Sensing his own aura, he was delighted. I can attack the Divine Lord Realm. Chapter 3390 Returning to the Immortal World Big Brother Long Chen looked at Wu Tian reluctantly. They had just met. But after drinking once, they were about to part ways. Wu Tian was truly just like his big brother, looking after him in every way. Other than the five sovereigns, no one had ever given Long Chen such a feeling. Big Brother also wants you to stay a bit longer, but time does not permit it. The arrow has been shot. There is no stopping it. I have already chosen this path, and I must fight to the end against this hateful world. I will either flip the heavens or be turned to dust. You are the same. Once you return to the immortal world, you must do your best to get stronger as fast as possible. This world is about to change. The peace of the nine heavens and ten lands will not continue for much longer. A terrifying storm is about to sweep over us, and it might be even more terrifying than that battle trillions of years ago. The three worlds, six daos, nine heavens, ten lands, they will all be affected. Ahaha, it's exciting, isn't it? Work hard. 
I look forward to joining hands with you in that chaotic flow of worlds. We will completely topple the ten planar worlds. Wu Tian grew excited toward the end. His blood rumbled within his body, and battle intent soared out of him. It was as if he lived for battle. Affected by him, Long Chen also didn't show any fear. Just like Wu Tian, his own blood heated up. Even the reluctance to part was pushed aside by that desire to fight. Boom! Wu Tian stabbed his spear through the air. As a result, fragments of space-time were blown apart, and the dome of the heavens was pierced. A channel then appeared. Long Chen could sense the aura of the immortal world on the other side of the channel. With a single spear strike, Wu Tian opened a path for Long Chen to go back to the immortal world. Go, brother. This place is actually separated by many chaotic flows of space from the immortal world. This channel will only last for a few breaths time, said Wu Tian. Long Chen nodded. Take care, brother. When we meet again, let us topple this unjust world. Long Chen dove into the channel. There was a powerful suction force that directly brought him all the way to the end of the path. He was already back in the immortal world. He could sense the aura of the immortal world around him. Suddenly, he turned back to the channel and shouted, Big Brother, don't forget to tell my two wives that I'm safe and sound. The channel closed. Long Chen didn't know if Wu Tian heard him or not. Ling Yuan and Ming Kangyu must have been worried about him. However, thinking about it, Wu Tian would definitely send word to them. His worry was superfluous. Long Chen found himself on a mountain. There were countless birds and beasts around, but they were fleeing in every direction, clearly scared away by Wu Tian's attack. After they fled, the world became calm. Long Chen then sat on a boulder, feeling stunned. After returning to the immortal world, he actually felt disappointed. He didn't want to leave Ling Yuan and Ming Kangyu. He also didn't want to leave the new brother he had just met. It felt like everything had just been a dream, and it was both sweet and bitter. He felt like he was too small. Within the raging currents of the heavenly Daos, all his efforts were unable to cause even the slightest ripple. Furthermore, Wu Tian's final words stayed with Long Chen. It seemed that after reaching his current realm, Wu Tian's senses were sharper. He could see further. Perhaps it was precisely because he could see it coming that he described the oncoming storm as terrifying. Furthermore, he said that the three worlds, six Daos, nine heavens, and ten lands would be affected. He said that he had chosen a path of no return. But what about Long Chen? Just as Wu Tian said, once an arrow had been shot, it couldn't be called back. Long Chen had chosen his path, so he had to walk it to the end. Wu Tian didn't have Long Chen follow him. Instead, he treated Long Chen as a true brother. As he still had it very dangerous in the netherworld, he didn't want Long Chen to be involved in his business. Moreover, he had never thought about taking Long Chen in as one of his subordinates. Ming Kang Yu's worries had been for nothing. Wu Tian didn't have any ulterior motives when it came to Long Chen. Originally, he just wanted to return the favor, but after finding that their characters were similar, they became brothers. He never thought about profiting from Long Chen. He only wanted to look after him and hoped that he would grow up faster. This time, Long Chen had fallen for Imputa's trap. Fortunately, Mo Nian had appeared on time and broken the channel, allowing him to escape into the chaotic flow of space. Actually, falling into the netherworld could be said to be a blessing in disguise. Now, he had 13 mature heaven tier heavenly Tao fruit and 99 mature earth tier heavenly Tao fruit. These things were priceless treasures. So many heaven tier nether kings had been slain in the netherworld, producing some heaven tier heavenly Tao fruit. These 13 heaven tier heavenly Tao fruit were ready for the dragon blood warriors. 
However, it would be best if these things didn't see the light of day. They couldn't be traded for money. After Si Leng Yuein and Ming Kang Yu, Long Chen knew that the two no longer needed his help, and Wu Tian could also secretly look after them. So, Long Chen didn't need to worry about them. He had also obtained that supremely terrifying dagger, a powerful life-protecting talisman. Moreover, his cultivation base had even reached the Great Circle. Eh, my cultivation base. Suddenly, Long Chen noticed that his cultivation base had fallen a bit. Originally, he had reached the point of breaking through at any moment. However, now that he was in the immortal world, his realm had fallen from the Great Circle to the late Twelfth Heaven stage. It was rather curious. Could it be the result of the laws between the two worlds being different? Long Chen couldn't figure it out. But he had only fallen a little bit. It wasn't much of a problem. He could reach the peak again in just ten days. Long Chen's mind then sank into the primal chaos space. The black soil had devoured a huge number of corpses, unleashing a sea of life energy. Because of it, the Wood Foundation Divine Tree's fourth-generation fruit had matured. Furthermore, the trees themselves had once more grown in size. Just as Yang Wenlong said, with every generation of fruit they bore, they would grow in power. Thus, every succeeding generation of fruit was more valuable than the last. Not only that, but the devil eye water lilies had even reached the third tier. Long Chen then chose to replant their seeds. Long Chen found that just a tenth of the corpses could make them reach maturity. If that was the case, he should be able to grow more than six hundred devil eye water lilies. It was unknown just how much the life energy contained within the wood foundation divine trees had increased. Long Chen estimated that even after advancing to the divine lord realm, he wouldn't need to worry about running out of life energy. His mind then retreated from the primal chaos space. Looking at a distant mountain, Long Chen had the urge to raise his head and roar. Once he became a divine lord, he would truly be a fish swimming through the sea, a bird flying through the heavens. Hey, naked little fellow, what are you doing? Don't you know what shame is? Just as Long Chen took the posture to release the emotions in his heart, he heard a disdainful voice from behind him. Chapter 3391 Integral Heaven Starfield Long Chen looked back and saw a group of people rushing over here. There were men and women amongst them. The women hastily turned away when they saw him, while the men sneered at him. Only then did Long Chen realize that he was naked. The black robes he had been wearing were gone. Those black robes were clothes that Leng Yuein and Ming Kangyu had made for him, and they were made out of the laws of the netherworld. When he entered the immortal world, the laws of the netherworld faded and his clothes naturally disappeared. But his mind had been in the primal chaos space, so he hadn't noticed. Long Chen hastily took out new clothes. At this moment, those people had gotten close. He was surprised that some of them had strange blood kiss. They weren't of the human race, or perhaps it should be said that they also had the aura of the beast race on them. In other words, they were mixed blood. Rat, what are you doing here, buck naked? Tell me what happened here just now, asked a fair-faced young man in violet robes. He was very overbearing. Just like Long Chen, he was at the peak of the Four Peak Realm. He was a primal. Based on his aura, he could be counted as an expert. However, that overbearing arrogance of his was so great that Long Chen didn't feel that his power matched it. These people seemed to be led by this arrogant man. They were all wearing similar robes, as if they came from the same sect you're asking me. Long Chen pointed at his own nose. TCH, is there anyone else here? If I wasn't asking you, who would I be asking? Demanded that man impatiently. If you're asking me, who am I supposed to ask? Long Chen curled his lips at him and turned to leave. 
Rat, do you want to die? Do you know who you're talking to? Kneel and beg senior apprentice brother Kai to spare your life. That group of people instantly surrounded him, and one of them even barked at him. However, they didn't take out their weapons. It seemed that they truly didn't place him in their eyes. Long Chen almost laughed from rage. These people were existences that he could wipe out with a single slap. Now they wanted him to kneel. Aya, it seems that you have a great background. My eyes were blind. It seems that I have to ask for guidance. Long Chen looked at those people, acting shocked. Before that senior apprentice brother Kai could speak, an expert beside him already said, Brett, listen well. This is our falling Stargates rank 1901, senior apprentice brother Kai Hang. He has the noble bloodline of the gold scale fire Drake. You are nothing more than a little human. What are you waiting for? Shouldn't you hurry up and kowtow to repent for your sins? Gold scale fire Drake. Noble bloodline. Long Chen eyed that senior apprentice brother Kai and found that although he did have the fluctuations of beast blood, there were no flame fluctuations nor did any part of him have the characteristics of the gold-scale fire drake. In other words, although he might have that bloodline, it had become so impure that he didn't even have the slightest trace of flame energy in his body. Senior apprentice Brother Kai stuck out his chest proudly when his bloodline was mentioned. It seemed that this bloodline was what he was proudest of. Admirable. Long Chen nodded. Senior apprentice brother Kai's expression improved after hearing that praise. But Long Chen then continued, I really admire your courage. Being ranked in the 1900s yet still having the face to go out into the world. Tell me, how did you manage to cultivate such a thick skin that is impervious to blade or spear, immune to flame or water? Dai. Senior apprentice brother Kai roared furiously. Oh. After that, senior apprentice brother Kai was on the ground, twitching. He hadn't even moved before Long Chen slapped him down. The others only saw a blur. Before they even understood anything at all, the strongest of them had collapsed on the ground. His head was drooping oddly. His neck was clearly broken, and his body had completely deformed. He stared in horror at Long Chen. He had lost the ability to recover or even move. Who, who are you? The other experts cried out and retreated, taking out their weapons. One of them waved their hand, causing a magical symbol to appear. It seemed that he was requesting aid. Little fellow, our distress signal has been released. Other experts will quickly arrive. I'd advise you to A.H. The one who released the distress signal suddenly screamed. A fist-sized rock struck his chest and shattered. As a result, his chest caved in, and he tumbled back. Long Chen disliked that person's shouting, so he kicked a rock at him to make him shut his mouth. However, he didn't kill him. If he had wanted to, that person would have simply exploded into blood mist. The others stared in terror at Long Chen. Now they knew that they had provoked a terrifying expert. Don't kill me. Otherwise you'll provoke a calamity. Just tell me what you want. As long as I have it, I'll give it all to you. Shouted senior apprentice brother Kai. Although he couldn't move, his head was still capable of begging for his life. Don't worry, I won't kill you. I disdain killing trash. I'm going to do a soul search on you. It would be best if you cooperate, or that would be you killing yourself, and it would have nothing to do with me. Long Chen pressed a finger on senior apprentice brother Kai's forehead. No, my soul has restrictions. All memories related to the falling star gate are sealed. If you go through them, I'll instantly die, cried senior apprentice brother Kai. I'm not interested in your dogshit falling star gate. Do your best to cooperate, or I'll kill you. Long Chen snorted and pressed his finger down. After that, senior apprentice brother Kai stiffened. 
a flow of information then poured into long chen's mind the integral heaven star field ancient orchid domain auspicious cloud prefecture hum it is ruled by the demonic beast race also the human race is the lowest power here they survive here by sucking up to others and begging for their lives long chen didn't quite dare to believe it the place that he was in was the immortal world but it wasn't his original star field the heavenly swell domain was just one domain of the empyrean heaven star field back then wu tan hadn't bothered with what star field long chen was originally from when he sent him back to the immortal world now long chen didn't know just how far he was from the empyrean heaven star field the most shocking thing was that after going through this person's memories long chen learned that this star field was ruled by the demonic beast race the human race ended up marrying the demonic beast race so the majority of the life forms in this star field were of mixed blood the demonic beast race was the strongest while the human race was the weakest the humans here worked hard at cultivation in hopes of gaining the favor of the demonic beast race and being chosen as partners or followers now long chen understood why senior apprentice brother kai would be so arrogant he had a trace of the blood of a demonic beast pure humans were nothing more than their attendants they had to treat their masters well in order to survive lowly fellow are you challenging my falling star gate just as long chen finished up his soul search countless powerful auras came charging over from every direction they had surrounded this space chapter three thousand three hundred ninety two ying bakan long chen raised his head and looked around he was completely surrounded also the few fellows that had been shaking in fear were instantly revitalized brett now is your doomed this is our falling stargate's senior apprentice brother ying bakong he's the ninth rank heavenly genius of our junior generation a part of the sacred silver wing hawk eagle race kneel and repent thousands of experts had come in response to the distress signal but of all of them it seemed that this ying bakong had the strongest aura long chan eyed this ying bakong whose blood kai was like a sea he had sharp eyes and a hooked nose he was looking coldly at long chen seemingly seeing through his weaknesses the majority of those that had come were mixed blood there were only seven pure blood demonic beasts the rest were humans but those humans weren't even qualified to stand at the front they stood behind the other experts showing their own inferiority rat what are you just staring for kneel and beg for mercy perhaps senior apprentice brother ying bakong will pity you and take you in as a servant ha 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 laughed one of those humans i'd advise you to recognize kindness when you see it senior apprentice brother ying bakong's power isn't something that you can imagine if you kneel now you can still be spared that's right don't hesitate any longer although i want to see senior apprentice brother ying bakong's amazing power i know that he is merciful don't make things hard on him hesitation won't help more and more of the human experts chided long chen at the same time as they chided him they repeatedly praised ying bakong's kindness and strength they fawned all over him enraging long chen just when did the human race fall to such a level they needed to fawn on demonic beasts to survive they humiliated their fellow humans in order to ingratiate themselves with the demonic beasts although long chen wasn't sure why such a thing would occur in the integral heaven star field it didn't matter the human race had to have their own dignity shut your mouths long chen roared thunderously as a result a sound wave shattered the nearby mountains and the people chiding long chen instantly felt their heads buzz they coughed up blood and held their heads their souls on the verge of collapse rather than properly being humans you just had to turn yourselves into dogs when did the human race need to beg for other people's charity you've lost the face of the human race 
Long Chen's voice shook people's souls. Their expressions changed. These experts had not expected this human to have such power. Only now did they realize that he was actually powerful. I didn't expect to run into someone tough. Excellent. It just so happens that I need a fighter. Let me place a contractual slave mark on you. I guarantee that you will rise like a shooting star. I won't treat you badly. Ying Bakum stepped forward, pleasantly surprised by Long Chen's shout. In the integral heaven star field, the demonic beast race's power stood at the peak of the cultivation world. They would pick out powerful humans to be their fighters. It could be considered the same as how humans took in demonic beasts as housebits. After forming a contract, they would battle their comrades. However, there were many kinds of contracts. The most unfair ones were naturally the ones involving a slave mark. The person with the slave mark could have their life and death decided by a single thought from their master. Brat, senior apprentice brother Ying Bakung actually has such a high opinion of you. Hurry up and kneel, said one of the humans. He was furious about having his soul in such pain. But even in his rage, he didn't forget to praise Ying Bakong. Tai. With a single bark, Long Chen's spiritual strength surged, and that guy's head exploded. His headless corpse then fell to the ground. You'll even sell out your own race. It's clear that you've often helped those beasts bully humans. Keep talking, and I'll kill you, said Long Chen furiously helping others bully their own race. This was something that Long Chen viewed as a betrayal. In this lifetime, betrayal was the thing he couldn't accept the most. Ha ha ha! Even your spiritual strength is so powerful. Good, I really found a treasure this time. I, Ying Bakong, will offer you a chance to have a fair fight. Are you prepared? Long Chen's display only made Ying Bakong feel more excited. His blood kai was already starting to circulate. A powerful housebit was also very important to the demonic beast race. Not only was it a display of power, but it was also a display of status. A powerful housebit had to be subdued with powerful, martial might and great bait. The demonic beast race's common practice was to first defeat one and then offer status, position, resources, and perhaps even beauties, making it sound as if submitting to them led to glory and riches, while resisting only led to death. It was a simple and crude way to subdue the human race. But it was very effective. So Ying Bakam was very moved. I am prepared. Are your feathers prepared? Long Chen's fury soared. He didn't hate Ying Bakong, but he did hate these gutless humans. Of course, saying that he would take Long Chen in as a house pit was also a great provocation, so Long Chen couldn't hold himself back. Although he knew that this star field was under the control of the demonic beasts, he no longer cared. Ha ha ha, excellent. This is the character that I want. I'll break this character of yours and make you mine. Yin Bakan laughed and spread his arms. The next moment, an eagle cry rang out and his blood kai instantly ignited. The other experts quickly retreated to avoid being blown far into the distance by these kai waves. Senior apprentice brother Ying Bakang is truly amazing. This aura alone is terrifying. Heavens, I really am fortunate to get to see senior apprentice brother Ying Bakang fight again. To be able to see senior apprentice brother Ying Bakong's heroism once more, even in death, I can rest in peace. This aura is a height that we humans could not achieve even if we cultivated for ten thousand years. This is the power of a holy bloodline. It truly is admirable. With Ying Bakong's aura surging out, countless humans started fawning over him. That endless bootlicking was nauseating. This wasn't admiration that truly came from within them. It was more like a slave bending the knee and scraping any favor that they could. Long Chen had the urge to kill all of those boot lickers. He had never thought that a person 
could reach such a level of shamelessness. As expected, the world was huge and full of countless marvels. The void rumbled as Ying Ba Kong's aura shook everyone. It went without saying that his blood Kai was truly powerful. His bloodline was very pure. Are you prepared? I'm about to attack. Remember, the person to defeat you is the great Ying Ba Kong, the heir of the Silver Wing Hawk Eagle's bloodline. Do you know how many humans have begged me to take them in? I can't even be bothered to reply to them. But you are different. Following me will be your life's wisest decision, said Ying Ba Kong arrogantly. If you're prepared, just make your move. Today, if I don't pluck all your feathers, you won't understand that Boss Long San isn't easy to provoke, sneered Long Chen. Courting death, Ying Bakong shot through the air, his fingers like talons. His hand then became a silver claw as he instantly arrived in front of Long Chen. Chapter 3393 beat you until you're convinced a claw tore through the air, bringing with it a whistling gust that tore up the earth. This attack's power was quite heavy. Yin Bakong was clearly enraged. You can go wild if you wish, but don't go past the limit that I permit, shouted Yin Bakong as he attacked. A feathered bird also has a limit. If I tell you to endure it, then you have to endure it. Long Chen snorted and unleashed a palm, just like that, without any flashy technique. At the next moment, a metallic explosion boomed, Kai waves erupted, and a crunching sound rang out. Cheers rang out from the other experts. Just as they were about to say some fawning words over how Ying Bakong shattered Long Chen's arm with one attack, they heard a scream. Blood then sprayed through the air. After that, their figures parted. They saw Long Chen's upper body was covered in blood, and he was clutching a bloody arm. And when they looked at Ying Bakong, they saw that he was pale. His arm had left his body. They were dumbfounded. Ying Bakong's arm had been ripped off. It had to be known that he had the body of a demonic beast. Their physical bodies were all very powerful, comparable to divine weapons. But his arm had simply been torn off just like that. Just what kind of terrifying power did that require? You have some skill. But... You are qualified to make me use my full power. Ying Ba Kong's expression was gloomy. At this moment, the space behind him rumbled and his manifestation appeared. It was a silver divine bird with two wings. After that, an ancient desolate air spread. Ying Ba Kong's blood kai grew explosively, and his entire body shone. Moreover, the arm that Long Chen had torn off actually grew out once more. Ying Bakong was bathed in the divine light of that divine bird. Right now, a halo of light surrounded him. The current him had finally unleashed his full power. Ying Bakong has finally gotten serious. This battle is over. This fool, he has actually angered senior apprentice brother Ying Bakong. He's definitely dead now. Maybe not. Ying Bakong wants him as a battle pet. It's just up to whether or not he has the fortune to make senior apprentice brother Ying Bakong show mercy. As Ying Bakong's manifestation rumbled, everyone began to discuss this change. Of course, all this discussion was nothing more than flattery and fawning. The human race really is contemptible. If I don't show you some power, you'll never know what respect is. Today I'll show everyone what true power is, a power that a human like you could not achieve even after an entire lifetime of cultivation. Ying Bakong's silver wings suddenly came out of the manifestation and shrouded the heavens. A pair of wings smashed down from the heavens like heavenly blades. Boom! Just as everyone thought that the land would be torn apart, those silver wings stopped in midair. A hand caught them. What the? Everyone, including Ying Bakong, was completely shocked. This terrifying attack had been caught barehanded, and without the slightest aura leaking out. In other words, Long Chen's power far surpassed Ying Bakong's. 
Otherwise, there was no way he could do this so effortlessly. Are you done bragging? Then it should be my turn now. Boom. Long Chen then tightened his grip, and those giant wings shattered in front of everyone's stupefied gaze. These silver wings that were made of bloodline power and heavenly Tao energy were crushed just like that. Ying Ba Kung coughed up blood. That was a bloodline divine ability connected to his soul, so the destruction of the wings also injured him. Boop! Suddenly, the earth exploded with a stamp of Long Chen's foot. He shot toward Ying Ba Kung, unleashing a punch to his abdomen. He was so fast that it was almost impossible to see him with the naked eye. By the time Ying Bakong reacted, he was already struck. His body instantly curled up like a shrimp, and blood spurted out of his mouth. This one punch almost made his body explode. Ying Bakong's body smashed through several large mountains. Long Chen then stamped on the air and chased after him. Suddenly, a giant silver eagle appeared. It spread its wings, filling heaven and earth. After that, a terrible aura erupted and terrified everyone. Senior apprentice brother Ying Bakong has summoned his true body. That brat is done now. However, very quickly, something that they had never imagined before occurred. After summoning his true body and unleashing that frightening aura, Ying Bakong spread his wings and soared away. Rather than shooting at Long Chen, he flew in the opposite direction. He actually chose to flee. Those experts were left dumbfounded. It had to be known that a demonic beast was in their strongest state when they summoned their true bodies. Ying Bakong had actually summoned his true form to flee. They couldn't believe it. From the start, Long Chen had not revealed his aura. So, they were unable to tell just how powerful he was. However, Ying Baka was actually so terrified that he fled. They then realized that they were wrong. In his true form, Ying Bakong's spiritual perception was also more perceptive, giving him a better sense of danger. Just as he summoned his true body and prepared to go all out against Long Chen, an intense sensation of danger filled him, as if Long Chen's body concealed an ominous beast that would devour him in one gulp. Hence, he instinctively fled. Unfortunately for him, just as he fled, Long Chen vanished from his original location. By the time he reappeared, he was already on Ying Bakong's back. With a single kick, Ying Bakong tumbled to the ground, smashing a large hole in the ground. Countless feathers then flew off. The place that Long Chen had kicked lost all its feathers. Those feathers were Ying Bakong's defensive armor, and this one kick had essentially stripped him of his armor. All this time, Long Chen had been in the netherworld increasing his power, and the experts that he had encountered were all supremely powerful, so powerful that he was powerless to resist. Now that he was back in the immortal world, he finally noticed that his body had completely transformed. He was like a completely different person from his old self. His physical body was so powerful that he didn't need any other power. He could entirely rely on just the ordinary power of his physical body to fight. He didn't even need to circulate his blood kai. This was why those people were unable to sense his power and had continuously provoked him. Ying Bakong continued to flee for his life, but Long Chen was faster than him. With every attack, he sent Ying Bakong flying and a mass of his feathers fell. In just a short amount of time, this silver eagle covered in feathers had become a bald chicken. His wings were broken and his legs were made tame. Moreover, his neck was askew as he knelt on the ground on his last breaths. Seeing Long Chen raising his foot at him again, Ying Bakong suddenly cried out, I admit defeat. Don't kill me. I'm willing to be your battle pet. Chapter 3394 Sacred Pill Hall Ying Bakong finally admitted defeat, and only then did Long Chen stop. Ying Bakong had been badly beaten. It was unknown just how many times his bones had been broken. 
Now, his body was completely deformed. Long Chen didn't kill him. He only condensed a spiritual seal and placed it on the latter's head. Ying Ba Kong's body then quivered. Just like that, a spiritual mark was placed on his soul. After that, Ying Ba Kong returned to human form. His face was black and blue from the beating, and his aura was also in disarray. Long Chen had almost crippled him. The spiritual mark I gave you isn't a slave seal. It will vanish in ten days. During these ten days, you have to listen to my orders. After ten days, you can scram, said Long Chen indifferently. Ying Ba Kong had long since lost his previous arrogance. After being violently beaten, the arrogant flames within him were extinguished. Originally, he had thought that he would become a slave. But he was stirred when he heard Long Chen say this. Really? asked Ying Ba Kong, pleasantly surprised. Of course. With your talent and power, do you think you're even qualified to follow boss Long San? snorted Long Chen. If I didn't have some use for you, I'd have killed you with a slab. Ying Ba Kong went from dispirited to invigorated in an instant. He had just fallen to hell and was dragged back out. He only needed to listen to Long Chen's orders for ten days, that was the greatest blessing of his life. Many thanks, Master. Ying Ba Kong's mood truly changed quickly, and he directly called Long Chen Master. It seemed that compared to the human race, the thinking of demonic beasts was far simpler. Tell me, what did you come to this place for? What's going on in the ancient orchid domain's auspicious cloud prefecture? Long Chen had done a soul search, but it wasn't a brute-forced soul search. He only got some fragmentary information. Master, we, PFFT. Ying Ba Kong suddenly coughed up blood. His aura then fell rapidly. In his excitement at not being forever enslaved, he forgot to suppress his injuries. The beating that Long Chen had given him was quite severe, so his wounds flared. Seeing this, Long Chen took out a medicinal pill and gave it to him. As the medicinal energy spread throughout Ying Ba Kong's body, he seemed to go from almost dead to bursting with life in just a short moment. His wounds mostly recovered, and he was shocked. Many thanks, Master. This medicinal pill of yours is marvelous. I feel like it's not at all inferior to the medicinal pills of the sacred pill hall, or perhaps even greater. The sacred pill hall. You speak of one of Lord Brahma's four halls. Asked Long Chen in surprise. Lord Brahma had four halls beneath him. The Nine Underworld Hall, the Blood Kill Hall, the Sacred Pill Hall, and the Martial God Hall. Long Chen had already encountered the Nine Underworld Hall and the Blood Kill Hall. But the Sacred Pill Hall and the Martial God Hall didn't exist in the Heavenly Swell Domain. So, he hadn't expected to run into them here. Yes, the sacred pill hall is the strongest force in the integral heaven star field. It possesses absolute authority here. The cultivators of this domain can essentially be split into four tiers. The lowest tier is the human race. The middle tier is the half-beasts, half-demons. The high tier is the demonic beast race. Above the demonic beast race are the alchemists of the sacred pill hall. Their statuses are such that even my demonic beast race must bow in greeting toward them. I was once badly wounded and spent a great deal of money to buy a healing pill from the sacred pill hall. It was truly effective, comparable to master's divine pill, said Ying Baka. It had to be known that the sacred pill hall's medicinal pills were very expensive. To demonic beasts, ordinary medicinal pills were of limited effect. Thus, when they were injured, they would normally rely on themselves to recuperate rather than buy pills. However, a random pill that Long Chen tossed out almost fully healed Ying Ba Kong, so he was filled with shock. He began to wonder about Long Chen's status. He vaguely felt like he had run into a supremely terrifying figure. The disciples of the falling star gate didn't know what to do. 
their rank nine heavenly genius had actually become someone else's battle pet if that spread how could the falling stargate's disciples face the world however even ying bakong had been beaten into submission so the rest of them didn't even have the courage to fight they only stealthily sent transmissions to ying bakong ying bakong pretended that he couldn't even hear them considering that he now had long chen's spiritual seal on him these messages were no different than harming him we're going long chen didn't want to be stared at by these people so he brought ying bakong away in order to suck up to long chen ying bakong directly summoned his true form to fly away with long chen on his body however just as he did he realized that he didn't have a single feather on his body it was exceptionally ugly he hastily put away his true form and silently followed behind long chen they then found a secluded place where long chen asked him about the situation in the integral heaven star field ying bakong clearly knew more according to his story the ancient orchid domain was the most prosperous domain in this star field as for the auspicious cloud prefecture it was the core of the star field there were several world kings standing guard over this place actually the master of his falling star gate was a half-step world king a terrifying greater demon almost all the powers within the integral heaven star field were created by demonic beasts as for the human race they were just subordinates the sacred pill hall was the highest level ruler of this place the medicinal pills that they refined were mostly for demonic beasts thus they ruled this star field of demonic beasts however the sacred pill hall also showed great consideration for the human race they did not permit the demonic beast race to fully suppress the human race in this domain the two could coexist peacefully that was what resulted in there being particularly many mixed blood descendants of the beast race and the human race but the human race here was in the habit of hugging the legs of the powerful demonic beasts because their bloodlines could be directly transmitted to the next generation at the very least their physical bodies would be dozens of times stronger than pure human experts the sacred pill hall actually did such a thing long chen was surprised but he then shook his head one of lord brahma's subordinates definitely wouldn't do something so good for no benefit they definitely had some scheme the integral heaven starfield was prospering it had been in an era of peace for countless years and no large battles had erupted within thus whether they were humans or demonic beasts they all viewed this place as a wonderful home even if the human race's position was lower, countless experts of the human race were still willing to cross domains and come here. The most surprising thing to Long Chen was that this star field didn't have the Huayan Trading Company. Such a large place that was flourishing actually didn't have the Huayan Trading Company in it. That implied quite a few problems. Could it be that the sacred pill hall refused to permit it? long chen suddenly recalled that he had gone to many domains that had the huayan trading company but no sacred pill hall could it be that the two could not coexist within the same place that's right you're all at the peak of the four peak realm what is going on asked long chen all the experts from the falling star gate were at the same realm that was very curious we came to participate in the divine lord immortal realm that opens only once every ten years. We are going to break through to the Divine Lord realm inside of it. Did you not come here for that purpose as well? asked Ying Bakong in confusion. The Divine Lord Immortal Realm. Break through to the Divine Lord realm. Long Chen's heart leaped. Wasn't that precisely what he needed? Was that a coincidence? Or had Wu Tian intentionally set it up for him? now it was interesting chapter three thousand three hundred ninety five heavenly geniuses gather through a detailed explanation long chen learned that this time 
the auspicious cloud domain had gathered all the experts in the integral heaven star field that were at the peak of the four peak realm many four peak experts that could have long since broken through to the divine lord realm had actually sealed their cultivation bases just to wait for the divine lord immortal realm to open the divine lord immortal realm was a sacred land created jointly by the forces of the entire integral heaven star field this immortal realm was controlled by the sacred pill hall and was opened every ten years it was said that the divine lord immortal realm drew in energy from eight different worlds every ten years the immortal spiritual kai inside reached a peak and advancing to the divine lord realm inside was far easier with an almost one hundred percent success rate for the human race they normally advanced with over a ninety percent success rate but amongst demonic beasts only sixty percent would succeed in advancing of ten demonic beasts around four would die to their tribulation demonic beasts possess terrifyingly powerful physical bodies but at the same time their heavenly tribulations were exceptionally terrifying as well thus this divine lord immortal realm was a sacred place for the demonic beast race as for humans advancing there could allow their realm to be more stable and therefore peak power would once more rise it was a huge opportunity naturally countless people would prepare for this opportunity when the immortal realm was about to be opened some people who had missed the last opening of the realm would be willing to even wait a full ten years the divine lord immortal realm was very famous in the integral heaven star field every time it was opened quite a few experts from other star fields would be drawn over however if those experts wanted to participate in the opening of this immortal realm they had to receive a tablet from the sacred pill hall and make a contractual agreement to stay within the integral heaven star field for a thousand years or sire at least ten children before leaving it was this condition that resulted in there being particularly many races within the integral heaven star field however some of the more powerful demonic beast races had very strict requirements for marrying with the human race the humans that they married had to have great talent or they would be expelled as for ying ba kong's silver wing hawk eagle it was above average in the integral heaven star field it was a rather awkward position where it did have some fame but couldn't squeeze into the ranks of the truly powerful races as for the falling star gate that he was part of it was created by the falling star divine sparrow race the silver wing hawk eagle had attached themselves to this race the falling star divine sparrow race could be considered a first-rate force in the integral heaven star field and many bird type demonic beasts would join their side in truth demonic beasts weren't all united there were many conflicts between the various races especially between flying birds land beasts scaled beasts armored beasts and such although everyone in the core of the star field the ancient orchid domain would reserve themselves quite a few secret battles still occurred constantly it was very bloody the peace that appeared on the surface was covering up quite a few bloody undercurrents it was simply that everyone wanted profit and had no choice but to listen to the sacred pill hall also the sacred pill hall didn't bother with their secret squabbling as long as it didn't erupt into large-scale wars they wouldn't come out to mediate that was why even after coming to this peaceful place ying ba kong and the others had come in groups and brought distress signals if they did encounter their enemies who knew whether or not their enemies would simply erase them without anyone being the wiser naturally in the same line of thought if they did encounter smaller squads of their enemies they also wouldn't hesitate to wipe them out according to the rules the experts coming to the ancient orchid domain could only be at the four peak realm in other words the sacred pill hall refused to permit outsiders in other realms to appear in the ancient orchid domain for the opening of the divine lord immortal realm this was for fear of someone crazy coming in if that crazy person was a world king 
they might start a slaughter if they encountered people they had enmity with they might even tear them out by the roots in order to prevent such a large-scale slaughter the sacred pill hall carried out a strict testing at the entrances to the ancient orchid domain only small groups were allowed past thus even if a single power had hundreds of thousands of disciples they couldn't all stay together they could only hurry on to the auspicious cloud prefecture as for whether or not they would encounter enemies on the way that was up to luck they were all in the four peak realm so long chen was delighted by that if that was the case what would he need to worry about the thing that excited him the most was that no one here recognized him back then he had entrusted the huayan trading company with spreading his name but this region didn't have the huayan trading company so no one knew who boss long san was furthermore this place also didn't have the bloodgill hall and the nine underworld hall as for the sacred pill hall it didn't seem likely that they would know of him he didn't need to have so many misgivings ah oh, just as long chen was listening to ying ba kong's explanation about the integral heaven star field a peal of laughter rang out from above them hundreds of experts had surrounded them long chen had long since sensed these people but he had been listening to ying ba kong and thought that these people were just passing by he hadn't expected them to be coming right for them long chen eyed these people they were wearing the same robes as ying ba kong in other words they were also disciples of the falling star gate as for their leader his face was like a donkey's he had two hooks growing out of his back and his body was long and thin he was incomparably ugly when he smiled it revealed his protruding teeth making him appear even uglier ying ba kong's expression instantly grew ugly when he saw this man that donkey-faced man laughed at ying ba kong delightedly ying ba kong ah ying ba kong you really grow more and more useless you actually became a battle pet of a human our falling star gates no the face of the entire flying beast race has been lost by you how can someone like you be fit to challenge me for the eighth rank ha 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 what a joke the donkey-faced man's laughter was like the braying of a donkey clearly despite being from the same sect they were not friends as for the other disciples they stared oddly at ying baka they came because they had received a distress signal after that upon hearing that ying bakong had been defeated and brought away by a human they didn't dare to believe it they then directly set off in the direction that ying bakong's subordinates had indicated in just a bit they quickly caught up and saw ying bakong submissively answering long chen's questions ying bakong was shaking with rage this donkey-faced man was someone he hated the most being mocked by him drove him crazy his laughter in particular was an ear-piercing sound now it pierced ying ba kong's heart as well at this moment a single finger pointed at the donkey-faced man's head a bolt of lightning then pierced through his head and that laughter came to a sudden stop sorry i really can't handle that laughter of yours it really is powerful in front of all their shocked gazes long chan apologetically lowered his finger that still flickered with lightning chapter three thousand three hundred ninety six lightning falcon race after that finger moved the donkey-faced man fell to the ground and his body returned to its original form he was actually a vulture his death stunned even ying bakong although ying bakong detested this fellow the latter's power was indeed slightly higher than his own he had been suppressed for so many years with his ranking never surpassing this fellow's however this old opponent of his was killed just like that and it looked completely effortless because of this he suddenly felt a chill now he understood just how lucky he was that long chen hadn't wanted to kill him if he had then there would no longer be a ying bakong in this world a single corpse at the four peak realm long chen didn't even bother taking it 
Ying Ba Kung had those disciples put away the corpse and leave. Master, we should go too. The ancient orchid domain is enormous. It will take a few days for us to reach the auspicious cloud prefecture, and we'll also need to worry about other experts, said Ying Ba Kung respectfully once those disciples left. Long Chen nodded. The auspicious cloud prefecture was where all the heavenly geniuses of the entire star field were gathering. All kinds of conflicts would erupt when such arrogant figures were stuffed into close proximity. Things would not be peaceful. Long Chen felt that this was another way to eliminate the weaker people. The sacred pill hall did not permit large-scale battles. Then it seemed that they could only allow these smaller-scale battles to occur. The two of them then continued on their way. Other groups were moving carefully, but Long Chen didn't care. He just followed the best path, unafraid of anyone. They saw quite a few battlefields on the way along with some corpses. However, what irritated Long Chen was that those corpses were all human. Based on the bloodstains, humans weren't the only ones that have fought and died. It was simply that the corpses that weren't of the human race had been taken away by others. Only the human corpses were left to rot in the wilderness. Long Chen did have the urge to bury those people so that they could rest in peace, but thinking about the attitude of these humans, he shook his head. These pitiful people were also hateful. It wasn't worth being sympathetic toward them. Kill. Suddenly, they saw sand and dust erupting and battle roars shook the sky. A battle of thousands of experts had started. After that, they saw giant birds flying, their claws raking through the air, tearing apart the clouds. Black pythons also surged through the air, unleashing black mist as they fought the divine birds. It's the scaled eagle and the black python races. They are mortal enemies. They'll immediately start a life and death battle as soon as they see each other, explained Ying Bakong. The two of them arrived at the edge of the battlefield, and the battle seemed to already be over. After all, the number disparity between the two sides was immense. Clearly, the Black Python race must have launched a sneak attack against the other side. Ying Bakong whispered that they should go around the battlefield. Although he wasn't part of the scaled falcon race, they were both bird races. It was all too easy for him to be viewed as another enemy. Furthermore, there were only two people in their group, and these experts might treat them as an easy target. But Long Chen ignored his suggestion and continued walking along the path, going by the edge of the battlefield. The black python race instantly noticed Ying Bakong and narrowed their eyes. Their gazes turned toward the two of them. Ying Bakong's hair stood on end. Amongst these people were six whose auras were similar to his, as well as thousands of their underlings. As expected, what he was afraid of occurred. Sensing no one else around, they immediately surrounded the two of them. Long Chen didn't even seem to see the experts blocking his way. He emotionlessly said, If you don't want to die, scram. His footsteps were not slowing down at all. Little human, you dare to spout such big words. Die. The black python races experts shouted and collapsed on Long Chen. Fine. Long Chen raised a hand. After that, the temperature of the air instantly soared and countless flame runes danced in his hand. Raging flame prison. Flame pillars condensed, forming a giant flame prison. As a result, the black pythons in his way were all caught inside. It rapidly shrank. Before the attacking black pythons even understood what was happening, it shrank into the size of a single fist. As for the black pythons inside, they were crushed, turning into nothing more than blood mist that was incinerated by the flames. Their bodies and souls were wiped out. The rest of the black pythons that weren't inside the prison were terrified out of their minds. When they finally did recover their wits, they immediately fled for their lives. As for Ying Bakong, 
his eyes almost popped out of his head. Long Chen had instantly killed so many experts. It was far too easy, like it didn't require the slightest effort. The absolute power that Long Chen had displayed finally terrified Ying Bakong. He even felt that their falling gate, Star's number one heavenly genius, might not be a match for Long Chen. The two of them then continued onward. Anyone who dared to block their path was directly wiped out by Long Chen. Long Chen didn't encounter any powerful opponents on his way. The domineeringness that Long Chen displayed made Ying Bakong lose any feelings of sadness at being defeated. Instead, he started to feel like being Long Chen's servant wasn't an embarrassing thing. Perhaps it was actually something for him to be proud of. He didn't need to dodge other people's attacks now. Furthermore, when he ate the second pill from Long Chen, his feathers regrew and he directly summoned his true body, bringing Long Chen flying toward the auspicious cloud domain. It went without saying that with his silver feathers, Ying Bakong's speed was amazing. He sliced through the air. The sight of him flying all out drew the attention of countless experts, but those experts were even more shocked when they saw Long Chen on his back. In the integral heaven star field, it was always demonic beasts taking in humans as battle servants. They had never heard of a demonic beast submitting to a human. If a demonic beast was carrying a human, it was essentially becoming their mount. Suddenly, a rumbling sound rang out in the distance, and a bolt of lightning shot through the air. Ying Bakong was flying at full power, but that bolt of lightning shot right past him, vanishing as quickly as it appeared. Its speed was astonishing. Even Long Chen jumped in shock. It was his first time seeing such speed in the immortal world. Ying Bakong was already quite fast, but he was practically standing still in front of that bolt of lightning. Long Chen had only vaguely seen a silver bird within the lightning. It wasn't particularly big, perhaps only a few meters long, but its aura gave even Long Chen a sense of pressure. That was definitely a powerful existence. Long Chen instantly put away his contempt. It seemed that the integral heaven star field was actually quite powerful, and he simply hadn't encountered those real experts yet. Such astonishing speed was a first for him. The person with that speed would be able to strike like lightning, giving no room to counterattack. The lightning falcon race's emperor bloodline has also appeared, said Ying Bakong, his voice quivering. Chapter 3000 397 Elephant Emperor War Chariot with Ying Bakong flying at full speed in just a day and night. Long Chen could already sense several powerful auras rushing in the same direction from a distance away. They truly traveled quickly. Those who dared to travel so recklessly were all powerful existences that were unafraid of being surrounded and besieged. As for Long Chen, People had tried to stop him seven times during this trip. However, those people were all directly killed with a slap. Although Long Chen's aura was suppressed, true experts would be able to sense the pressure that a person gave them. So, those who would block him were all second-rate trash. Long Chen couldn't be bothered to waste words with them. As for Ying Bakong, he had gained quite a few spatial rings during this time, making plentiful gains. As a fellow demonic beast, there were many things that they had that were useful to him. So, it could be said that Long Chen had brought him an immense fortune. After this day and night of flying, Long Chen started seeing auspicious clouds filling the sky. Also, the spiritual Kai was extremely dense, and multicolored light shone throughout this place. It was like a rainbow sea. Master, this is the auspicious cloud prefecture, the most flourishing prefecture of the entire integral heaven star field. Other than those participating in the divine lord immortal realm's opening, there are no other outsiders. Even for our falling star gate, other than the disciples, there are only ten people with a spot to participate in the gathering. In this place, as long as you have money, 
you can buy anything that you dream of said ying bakang excitedly as he watched the auspicious clouds royal this was his first time coming to the auspicious cloud prefecture it was a famous location that had changed the fates of countless people it was somewhere people dreamed of coming to scram suddenly a large man like an iron tower came crashing toward the two of them in an ancient chariot he was like a meteor this was a powerful human expert with a very powerful blood kai such a thing was rare amongst humans as for the chariot it was unknown what material it was made out of however it was heavy and ancient giving off a wild desolate kai as a result the space in front of it was constantly compressed and exploding from its pressure moreover it was incredibly fast long chen was staring at the rainbow mist when it reached him long chen then pulled ying bakong and they instantly moved like lightning avoiding the chariot they a surprised sound came from inside the chariot it seemed that the owner was quite surprised that long chen could dodge however it simply whistled by at top speed although the driver had shouted at them to get out of the way he hadn't actually given them the time to do so furthermore he was crashing the chariot straight at them clearly with the intent to kill the two of them long chen was infuriated this fellow was too arrogant if he hadn't been caught off guard he would have smashed that chariot apart it's the elephant emperor war chariot the mammoth divine elephant race has also come the person inside is definitely set to be the mammoth divine elephant race's next leader otherwise they wouldn't be qualified to use the elephant emperor war chariot said ying bakong he was covered in cold sweat with that speed if it hadn't been for Long Chen pulling him aside, he would have crushed to bits. It was only after a moment that he recovered his wits and said, Many thanks for saving my life, Master. The Mammoth Divine Elephant Race. Long Chen was slightly surprised. He had heard of it before. It was quite famous and was said to be a species from the immemorial era, one of the brute power oriented demonic beasts. The one controlling the chariot actually possessed such astonishing blood kai, but that human was nothing more than the driver. The true expert was inside. Even so, that person had not revealed themselves, and the chariot was also concealing their aura. However, just as the war chariot flew by, Long Chen vaguely felt a blood kai as vast as a sea. There was definitely a terrifying expert inside something huge might just occur the lightning falcon race's emperor bloodline has appeared as well as the new leader of the mammoth divine elephant race this opening of the divine lord immortal realm will definitely not be simple those two races possess their own inheritance lands specialized for their own advancement so they would normally only send a few members to give some face to the sacred pill hall master you also said that you sensed several powerful auras on the way it seems that this time it's going to be extraordinary said ying bakong it would be best if it wasn't ordinary i really did come at the right time long chen smiled wu tian had truly picked the best spot he had actually sent him here if long chen didn't grasp this chance he would be letting down his big brother when they got closer to the auspicious cloud region, Long Chen clearly felt the spiritual Kai grow more abundant. Furthermore, the closer they got, the more abundant it was. They quickly saw the prefecture city, and even Long Chen had never expected this city to be so huge. There was already a long line in front of the gates. According to Ying Bakong, they had just started, so the line wasn't too long if they had taken a few more days the line would probably stretch for ten thousand miles there were eight entrances every entrance had quite a few experts lined up and only one entrance had no queue that was the entrance for foreign experts with that ying bakong entered through a different entrance while long chen went to that one alone 
there were two stern-faced elders by that gate. Their faces were covered in wrinkles, and their blood kai had already declined. Although they were heaven-tier immortal kings, they were so old that it was like they had turned into wood. A heaven-tier immortal king had a lifespan of hundreds of thousands of years. So, for these elders to be in this state, they had probably reached their limit. Their expressions naturally were too good. When Long Chen arrived, they almost seemed to be asleep. Only when Long Chen knocked on the table did they finally raise their eyes at him. It seemed that they were dissatisfied with how he had knocked on the table, so they irritably tossed a tablet to him and pointed to the stone tablet at the side without a word. Long Chen eyed the tablet. It told people how to register with it. They just had to carve their own name and add a drop of blood on it to register. Long Chen then wrote Long San, only to accidentally add a boss, turning it into Boss Long Sen. Long Chen wanted to ask if he could change it, but he found that those two elders were completely ignoring him. It was like they were sleeping. Long Chen frowned. If they were going to be so uncaring, he wouldn't care either. He directly dripped a drop of blood on it, and the tablet flashed. After that, the elder received the tablet, wrote something else on it, and then returned it to Long Chen. He then waved his hand as if telling Long Chen to scram. He entered just like that. Was there no need to confirm his status? They didn't even ask Long Chen anything. He was surprised by this. However, just as he entered the gate, a group of people surrounded him with unfriendly expressions. Chapter 3398 Establishing Might Before the City Human Race Brett, you need to pay a toll a small group of experts surrounded Long Chen, their leader being an exceptionally thick person. Scram! Long Chen was very direct and replied with a single word. From Ying Bakong, Long Chen learned that the integral Heaven Star Field's human race was not united at all. There were often cases of humans conning humans, using their status as part of the human race to trick their fellow humans. As for these fellows, they were clearly part of that group. They were actually keeping an eye on this entrance, which was for people outside this star field. Those outsiders had come to this place due to its reputation, but they might be unaware of the rules inside, so some people set their sights on them. Long Chen eyed these people. It seemed that they thought he needed to pay to go through their customs. Perhaps if they found a big sheep, they might be able to trick it into coming with them before killing it in a place no one else was watching. Naturally, this was a major reason why many demonic beasts looked down on the human race in the integral heaven star field. It was due to seeing this trash. Long Chen could instantly tell what kind of crap they were, so he directly told them to scram. Brat, you're courting death, their leader shouted angrily. Seeing that Long Chen didn't seem to be so powerful, he reached out to grab Long Chen's neck and teach him a lesson. However, Long Chen slapped him, sending him tumbling back and startling the others. They were about to make a move when Long Chen slapped them as well. With a few simple stamps of his foot, he broke their arms and legs. They then screamed. Most terrifying of all, Long Chen left a trace of flame energy in their broken bones, making them unable to heal and torturing them. Rather than being proper humans, you decide to be dogs, harming your own race to make some black money. How many people have fallen into your trap? Long Chen looked at them with disgust. As for the two elders that had handled his tablet, they looked back in astonishment. What are you looking at? If you want to die now, I'll help you out. You still want to dredge up better coffin materials right before your death, shouted Long Chen at them. It was unknown if they were afraid of Long Chen or if they simply knew how to mind their own businesses, but those elders really did turn away and act like they hadn't seen anything. Clearly, Without the tacit agreement from the two old fellows, these scums wouldn't dare to so openly block people here. Their cultivation bases were only average. 
if they didn't have the support of others they wouldn't dare to mess around to put it frankly while these scums did the work the majority of the money would enter the pockets of those two old ghosts this was a profitable relationship long chen had seen such a thing many times before what long chen hated the most was that these idiots were actually willing to betray their own race just for such little profit the main profit was taken by others at this moment quite a few gazes turned toward long chen du to the disturbance most of them were demonic beasts and they began to point as if there was a good show their expressions were all disdainful scram next time i see you harm your own race i'll make you regret being born long chen kicked them pulling back his flame energy he didn't wish to be a show for others to laugh at as if they had obtained a pardon from a death sentence those people hastily got up and slipped away without a trace the show's over so quickly how boring one group had just walked through another entrance when long chen shoo these humans away a dog biting other dogs leaving it with a mouthful of hair it's not that boring the human race is quite interesting laughed one demonic beast is it so interesting long chen also laughed he walked toward that group and his smile was a bit different from these people's it was a bit dangerous but these people were unfamiliar with long chen and didn't know what lay behind his smile of course it's interesting now there's no one else for you to bite why don't you bark like a good dog sneered that demonic beast i haven't heard a dog bark before why don't you demonstrate first said long chen with a smile he was already quite close to them that person laughed and really did start to demonstrate he was then shoved by someone beside him only then did he realize that he had been tricked by long chen his expression was twisted inferior human race you dare to toy with the great demonic beast race nail a terrifying will suddenly crash down causing everyone's heart to shake Boom. someone really did kneel but it wasn't long chen it was that demonic beast he knelt so hard that his bones broke and his knees deformed his entire body was practically crawling toward long chen it was truly like he was entirely devout to long chen the other demonic beasts were all shocked and retreated their souls were in pain in front of that will and their bodies quivered long chen's will was targeted at this one person the rest were barely affected but just sensing that will terrified them it was like they were facing the ruler of the world a single thought could wipe them out of existence that demonic beast guy prostrated himself toward long chen his entire body shaking he then pressed down on the ground with his hands trying to stand but he couldn't the human race inferior if we really are inferior why do you all take human form if we are inferior i suppose you would all rather die than submit if not raise your head said long chen clasping his hands behind him and looking down on that person that person suddenly coughed up blood in front of long chen's will he was powerless his soul was quivering on the verge of collapse i i submit ultimately he chose to submit if he displayed any further resistance he really would be crushed to death by long chen's will the difference was too great long chen was even more terrifying than his master who was a half-step world king so this person could only submit to save his life after that that terrifying will vanished and the invisible pressure was gone the world returned to its normal appearance as if nothing had happened however now when people looked at long chen there were no longer any looks of mocking master at this time ying ba kong walked over he had just entered the city in time to see long chen's will crushing that person as for the person long chen had just crushed he was actually an expert whom ying ba kong greatly respected seeing this scene now when ying ba kong called long chen master 
it felt like an honor in front of countless dumbfounded gazes long chen and ying baka went deeper into the city at this moment these haughty demonic beasts finally formed a trace of respect for the human race chapter three thousand three hundred ninety nine are you interested in being my companion after passing through three barriers long chen finally entered the prefecture city these three barriers weren't to block enemies but to seal the spiritual kai of heaven and earth inside making it so that the auspicious cloud prefecture's spiritual kai could only enter but not leave that was why every ten years the spiritual kai inside the auspicious cloud prefecture would reach a peak to the point that it formed the auspicious clouds this was a sacred land containing all the power of the star field so this event was a huge move one that even shocked long chin inside the city spiritual kai washed over him cleansing his heart and body all his pores automatically opened and that feeling was hard to forget as expected of the holy land of the integral heaven star field its reputation is not fake ying bakong was extremely moved to be bathed by the spiritual kai he had finally reached this legendary place it really is a good place long chen also couldn't help nodding he felt an indescribable closeness to this place as if this place was welcoming him even his anger at the provocations of the demonic beast race faded master causing a fuss outside the barriers is okay even killing people can be done if not done so brazenly but here everything is overseen by the sacred pill hall they are the absolute authority and they will not tolerate a challenge you cannot fight people here warned ying bakong what if someone provokes me asked long chen don't worry no one would dare to take the initiative in attacking you they will respect the rules swore ying bakong all right then long chen nodded speaking of which what will happen if i do fight anyone who fights here will be subdued by the sacred pill hall's experts if you don't resist you'll be punished lightly or expelled depending on the severity if you resist though or injure one of those people you will immediately be killed there are world kings standing guard over this place and not just one let alone disciples like us even the overlords of the major powers in this star field have to be obedient here said ying bakong i'm just worried that some idiot will show off in front of me my temper isn't very good said long chen master you still have to endure you can always settle things after entering the divine lord immortal realm don't fight here ying bakong jumped in shock at long chen's insistence if long chen really did fight here he might also be implicated he had waited several years for this opportunity fine i'll just take it easy long chen waved his hand in any case he would just do his best he knew that with the birth of his heart devil the more he suppressed himself the more the dark energy would nourish his heart devil his heart devil was very happy for him to be angered as the dark energy was the foundation for its growth long chen couldn't suppress himself too hard otherwise once the power of his heart devil grew too strong it would control him speaking of which master ying bakong suddenly became embarrassed what is it master you're an outsider you can enter the auspicious cloud prefecture for free but if you want to enter the divine lord immortal realm you need to pay quite a fee how much money do you have if you're only missing a bit i do have some here from plundering a few people but if you're missing too much we'll need to think of something else said ying bakong native experts could rely on the spots given to them by their sects they would be given a few immortal king crystals to enter the divine lord immortal realm an ordinary human needed to pay ten while a mixed blood person needed to pay thirty on the other hand demonic beasts had to pay more depending on the strength of their bloodline going from one hundred to one thousand 
the stronger their bloodline, the more spiritual kai they would absorb when they advanced to the divine lord realm. In order to make sure that this place could be opened every ten years, they needed to charge more money for the people who used up more spiritual kai. The likes of Ying Bakung needed to pay 170 immortal king crystals. That was almost his entire wealth. Although he had robbed a few people on the way, leaving him with almost 200 immortal king crystals, outsiders who wanted to enter the divine lord immortal realm had to pay double or more the price of natives. Once inside, Long Chen would have to take a test that would evaluate his overall power. Just like weighing a pig, they would decide how much money he had to pay. The stronger he was, the more he had to pay. Only now did Ying Bakung recall this problem, so he hastily explained it for fear that Long Chen wouldn't have the money to pay. If he didn't have that money at the crucial time, he might just kill Ying Bakung in his anger. However, a lack of money wasn't too big of a problem. According to the sacred pill hall's rules, if you really were strong enough, you could enter for free. But after advancing, you had to have ten children here before leaving. To put it frankly, it was using children to pay the debt. Considering how domineering Long Chen was, Ying Bakong didn't think that Long Chen would accept such a requirement. Is there a place to trade in the auspicious cloud city? The kind where you can exchange treasures for money? Asked Long Chen. Yes, there's many of them. They are all businesses under the flag of the sacred pill hall, so they'll buy and sell anything. As long as you have treasures, you can trade them, said Ying Bakong. Long Chen instantly guessed that the sacred pill hall had monopolized the market here. It was no wonder that the Huayan Trading Company was unable to enter. It seemed that the sacred pill hall refused to allow them entry. No need to worry. As long as it's about money, it's not a problem, said Long Chen. Although Long Chen had been displeased with Ying Bakong at the start and had almost killed him in his anger, after a few days of knowing him, he felt that Ying Bakong wasn't that distasteful. Long Chen didn't know if it was because the latter's intelligence wasn't very high or if he simply didn't dare to act against him. But at the very least, this entire time, Ying Bakong hadn't done anything but be entirely faithful to him. Although Long Chen had placed a spiritual seal on him, it was not a slave's seal, and Long Chen disdained investigating his secrets. Perhaps it was precisely due to this that Ying Bakong could sense Long Chen's pride. Long Chen didn't view him as anyone important, nor was he on guard against him. That was because the difference between the two of them was so great. That made Ying Bakong not have as many misgivings and directly answer any questions that Long Chen had. Hearing this, Ying Bakong was even more sure that this temporary master of his was a major figure from some star field. The two of them then entered the city. There were countless people here, and Long Chen was shocked to find that they were all primals with overflowing blood kiss. There were so many powerful heavenly geniuses that they simply seemed ordinary. However, Long Chen ended up drawing quite a bit of attention. Some of those gazes were rather strange. Some were provoking and disdainful. Clearly, these people were all demonic beast experts. The human race's experts would only appear later. They weren't qualified to come here so early. Human, are you interested in being my companion? Just as Long Chen was looking around, a tender figure appeared before him. Chapter 3400 Lei Yunarit was a small and tender girl with silver hair. She wasn't slender but was very well proportioned, with the right curves in all the right places. Her eyes were silver, and lightning runes could vaguely be seen flickering within her pupils. When she blinked, a destructive energy came out that made it so others didn't dare to look directly into her eyes. When she appeared, countless startled cries rang out. The Lightning Falcon Race's princess, Lei Yuner. The Lightning Falcon Race is a powerful immemorial race, and Lei Yuner is the first in 10,000 years to be born with an ancestral bloodline. 
she is the future empress of the lightning falcon race she actually came heavens that's a true peak heavenly genius this human actually enters her eyes just how many lifetimes of fortune is that lay Euner was famous so countless people recognized her at the same time they grew envious of long chen it had to be known that the lightning falcon race had risen to the peak in the immemorial era they were nobility amongst demonic beasts because of that countless demonic beasts wished to marry into their race but never had a chance the lightning falcon race was too proud to marry other demonic beasts so normal experts could only look up at them for this proud princess to actually accept a human as a housebit that was a huge honor and a huge blessing for the human long chen then looked at this pretty silver-haired girl he couldn't help smiling what do you want me to be your battle pet the silver-haired lei yuner looked at him and also smiled not a battle pet it will be an equal spiritual contract but i have to be the dominant one startled cries rang out lei yuner was intending on forming an equal contract with a human this was linking them together spiritually one person's glory was both of their glory one person's loss was both of their loss it was a tight connection that essentially turned them into comrades this would essentially turn long chen into lei yuner's future husband countless demonic beasts were driven crazy with jealousy had lei yuner gone crazy there were so many noble-blooded demonic beasts in front of her that she wasn't looking at why did she choose a human it had to be known that those noble demonic beast races very rarely married with the human race they had their own pride and refused to allow their pure bloodline to be wasted on humans only second-rate demonic beasts were willing to marry with the human race using them to get closer to the heavenly dows then there was a slight chance of an ancestral bloodline showing up but even with an ancestral bloodline there was also the bloodline of the human race mixed in as well there were many unknown variables whether or not it would be a good thing could not be said until the very end hence truly powerful demonic beast races were opposed to marrying with the human race as for someone as noble as the lightning falcon race for their princess to actually want to form an equal spiritual contract with a human drove countless demonic beasts crazy princess you are tarnishing the noble bloodline of the lightning falcon race you must think of your responsibility have you taken the face of the lightning falcon race into consideration one of the demonic beasts couldn't help stepping forward and crying out he was exceptionally emotional because he also came from a noble demonic beast race the lightning falcon race's princess was a target that countless experts were pursuing if lei yuner were to form that contract with long chen it would be like watching a noble crane marry a toad for them it was completely unacceptable please princess humans are so petty and low if you allow him to stain the noble bloodline of the lightning falcon race won't that be a humiliation to the mighty lightning falcon race others also stepped forward unable to endure such a thing they were all powerful demonic beasts with their own backgrounds as they advised lei yuner they also glared at long chen furiously they looked like they wanted to tear him to pieces human brat if you're smart you'll immediately leave if you dare to enter the divine lord immortal realm i swear on my family's name to tear you apart a toad like you shouldn't get crazy dreams otherwise big brother don't get angry i misspoke the final person to threaten long chen suddenly saw someone glaring at him furiously only then did he note that the latter was someone from the golden toad race and was extremely powerful the golden toad race was also quite powerful although it couldn't compare to the lightning falcon race it was also an existence with an ancient inheritance this race detested hearing people use toads as insults 
so that person hastily apologized my affairs are my own i don't need others to interfere all of you scram otherwise don't blame me for being ruthless in the divine lord immortal realm snorted lay Euner. her gaze roved around the crowd with lightning runes flickering within her eyes seeing this every one instantly shut their mouth so what do you think with my status and background it's not a bad deal for you said lay Euner sincerely turning back to long chen the surrounding people no longer dared to make a sound but flames were about to burst out of their eyes they glared at long chen it seemed that as long as long chen dared to say yes he would instantly die a miserable death long chen laughed if it was before just due to these gazes even if he didn't say yes just to anger them he would definitely do something to drive them crazy however this time he ultimately shook his head and simply said many thanks for your kindness but i know my position i'm not qualified to pursue you long chen made it sound very humble he knew that this girl was not ordinary her eyes contained a penetrative power so he knew that she had seen something which was the only reason she was making such a play the surrounding experts relaxed slightly but they still glared at long chen with contempt it was as if they were saying count yourself smart am i not good enough for you lei yuner smiled and leaned in closer to long chen until she whispered right into his ear with a voice that only he could hear you have true dragon essence blood the power of wild lightning the mark of the butterfly spirit race as well as the aura of the rainbow crane on you if you reject me i will tell everyone your secrets i don't mind telling you that the demonic beast race is quite violent any one of those things will draw countless experts targeting you they will be jealous and if they can't subdue you they will destroy you i know that you're very powerful but once you enter the divine lord immortal realm with so many people targeting you let alone searching for treasures you won't even get a chance to make your advancement you might even die inside now do you understand your current position you better agree now lei yuner's eyes flickered with lightning runes as she stared at long chen the two of them were only a few inches apart and her face was filled with utmost confidence long chen narrowed his eyes this lei yuner really wasn't ordinary she had actually seen through so many things however long chen indifferently shook his head i don't accept any threats this response made lei yuner's smile vanish it was replaced with an icy cold 